Good evening, students. Welcome to this session for Paper Three B, Goods and Services Tax. This is the first class for the under the new scheme of education and training, and this class is relevant for May two thousand twenty four examination. So, since you know that syllabus has changed for Intermediate Paper Three B, and in fact, the nomenclature of the paper itself has changed from indirect taxes to goods and services tax. so we will be covering in this session first of all we'll without uh, before starting the uh, technical topic we will first of all discuss how the uh, syllabus has changed what are the uh, the section wise and skill wise weightages under the new scheme then the study guidelines under the new scheme and the uh, you know the uh, weightage of both section a section b everything has undergone a change under the new scheme of Uh, this paper three B. In fact, the earlier the paper of taxation was paper four, and now paper taxation is paper number three in the intermediate course, and it is divided into two parts: income tax and GST. So today we will be we are starting with the live uh, classes, live learning classes for intermediate paper three B. I am here with you for this session. My name is Shafali. Shafali Jain and I am a faculty at Board of Studies for Indirect Taxes. So I will be taking you through this session. And first of all, I will be telling you about the syllabus and the subject. Then we will go into the topic today's topic that is GST in India and introduction. Okay. So let us start with the session. yeah as i told you that paper 3 taxation is of 100 marks but it has two sections in it section a and section b now section a carries hello uh, one of the student is telling that my voice is not audible sushil barik is telling uh, so i would request other students to please tell me whether i am audible or not so that i can continue with the session hope i am audible to you all uh, i am continuing with the session yeah i am receiving now everybody is saying it is audible so i am continuing with the session now paper 3b has two section section a and section b section a is income tax which carries 50 marks and section b is 50 marks gst goods and services tax i presume that there would be some students who are continuing from the old scheme to new scheme and some students will be directly in registering into new scheme so i would be uh, apprising both of uh, both type of the students that if anybody is converting from old scheme to new scheme i will apprise them that what are the changes they have to take into consideration while going through this paper first of all the weightage of the section has increased from 40 marks to 50 marks in old scheme the weightage for gst was of 40 marks now it has increased to 50 marks so that means there would be some in, uh, change in the syllabus also because now when the weightage has increased so syllabus will also undergo some change there will be some additions in the syllabus because of increase in the weightage so that we'll go through during the session okay now uh, the applicability which is there for may 2024 examination now for may 2024 examination the position of indirect tax law or goods and services tax which a student has to go through or which a student has to study is the finance act 2023 whatever amendments have taken place through finance act 2023 as well as the notifications and circulars which have been issued and become effective till 31st october 2023 So for May 2024 examination, the cut-off date is 31st October 2023. Whatever amendments of Finance Act 2023 which have become effective till 31st October 2023, as well as the uh, notifications and circulars which became effective till 31st October 2023 are relevant for your examination. So I would be telling you or I will be apprising you with the. publications which will be relevant for you what all you have to study for this paper how you have to take care of these classes how you have to go about these classes you can make the maximum benefit or how can you maximum utilize these live learning classes 
everything will be shared or will, i will be making you aware about these things during this session so please be with me throughout this session and i am sure that you will certainly gain something from this session okay so this is what first of all what i am telling you is the applicability for may 2024 examination why because all our publications will be based on this position only and in since study material is up to 30th april 2023 so the intervening period amendments are there in the statutory update let us go to the relevant bos publications first is study material now see this study material for may 2024 examination because it was uh, printed in the month of july itself beginning of july so the amendments which have been covered in the study material are up to 30th april 2023 until that time the finance act 2023 was also not applicable was also not effective though amendments had been proposed but you know under gst the amendments made by the finance act they are uh, made applicable after a certain period of time and that is notified separately because each of the state has to uh, you know carry out those amendments in their respective sgst acts that you will come to know when we'll discuss the about gst law uh, in detail but that takes time so finance act 2023 amendments we had given at the end of the chapters in fact i would like to take you through the study material I will share the uh, link to the study material. Okay, now hope this uh, first page of the uh, ICI website on which the study material is there. I think every is it is visible to everyone. So please confirm through your uh, text messages in the chat box that this page is visible to you. This is where the uh, new study material is hosted. why i want to take you to this study material because now during these live learning classes you are going to refer this study material after each class i would advise you to refer to this study material because you will be in a position to understand the concepts better in fact i would advise if you get the time try to have a glance at the chapter before coming to the class on the topic which is going to be discussed in the class this will increase your understanding of the topic to a great extent you will find a difference in your understanding of that particular topic don't go through the topic in detail because you will be cover, we will be covering it in the class but try to uh, yes it is visible to everyone so okay so uh, try to uh, have a glance at the chapter so you are aware that yes these are the topics which are going to be discussed today and then attend the class carefully go through the ppts which are given to you after the class go through the study material after the class and all the il examples illustrations Uh, test your knowledge questions everything go through them in detail so that you have an overall idea of the chapter after going through the class this class will help you in your understanding of the chapter now i will first of all go through the first chapter itself which we are going to discuss today see in the chapter what is the flow of the chapter that i am telling you that we have first of all the learning outcomes which apprises you about what all you are going to understand what are what all you are going to learn after going through the content of this chapter then we have an overview of the entire chapter that in this chapter we are going to learn about genesis of gst what is the concept of gst why it was introduced what is what was the constitutional amendment why it took place everything is given in an overview then we have the content now this this is the first chapter in fact if you see that there are lot many diagrams pictorial representations which we have resorted to to explain the concept in a lucid manner diagrams flow charts then pictorial representations are there and uh, in subsequent chapters you will find that first of all the statutory provisions have been explained uh, some statu uh, statutory provisions have been explained let me go through the um, just a minute let me go through the second chapter because that will give you an idea that how statutory provisions have been explained in first chapter there are no statutory provisions as such so we are going through the uh, flow of the chapter yes yes see in uh, for example in supply chapter we have the statute the definition of supply given under section 7 so how the chapter goes through goes is that first of all the statutory provisions are given to you in a tabular format so that you can you get a habit of reading the bear act or uh, rules then we have given you the analysis 
this is the analysis where this particular section has been explained in a very simple and a lucid manner so that each one of you can understand that what is actually given in the section how you have to interpret this section you have to break this section into different parts and go through the same so um background noise is coming i hope now it is not coming there is some issue in the system i suppose that is why it was coming but i hope now it is fine so a supply chapter you will see that statutory provisions are given to you and after that the analysis is given to you okay and this will be this is the flow of all the chapters this is how each of the chapter is uh, you know uh, framed that first of all learning outcomes will be there then there will be a then first of all learning outcomes will be there then the chapter overview will be there then statutory provisions its analysis is there and after that you will find that in the stat in the substantive provisions chapter 1 to chapter 7 in fact chapter 8 itc input tax credit you will find small uh, mcq quizzes also in between the chapter which tests the understanding of the law when you go through a chapter you try to understand the when you go through a chapter you uh, you test the understanding of the um, you want to test your understanding of the chapter then for that purpose we are giving you certain mcq quizzes like you can see here this is given at regular intervals in the chapter and answers to these mcqs are not given to you so uh, if there is still a sound problem please let me know so after each of the after at regular intervals you will find these mcq quizzes which are going to test your understanding of the chapter answers to these quizzes are not given here they are given by way of a like they are given separately uh, and you have to scan the qr code which is given at the end of the chapter for uh, knowing the answers to these quizzes because we want you to solve these quizzes on your own these quizzes have very good questions which will help you in testing your understanding of the chapter in fact improving your understanding of the chapter the conceptual understanding so go through these quizzes uh, Uh, during the chapter and try to find out their answer on your own and then check your answer through the answers given after scanning the qr code which is given at the end of the chapter in fact at the end of the chapter you will find that these are, see this is how the chapter goes there is so much there are so many diagrams in pictorial representation which is there which helps you in understanding the chapter and at the end of the chapter let me take you to the end of the chapter where we have a crossword puzzle for you also so that because this time we have introduced gamification in our study material to engage the students or to generate the interest of the students while learning okay so this is uh, how the crossword puzzle looks like and i request all of you to uh, after going through this first chapter when you when we complete chapter 1 go through the mcq quizzes some of them i will be covering in the in this session also but crossword puzzle you have to solve on your own and you have to find the answer that whether you have understood the chapter because crossword puzzle helps in uh, testing your retention of the chapter okay so go through the cross crossword puzzle also at the end of the chapter that will you know it will be engaging for you you will find it interesting to do so this is all about the chapter which we have and study material is hosted on the website all the chapters are given here you can go through them a one by one when as as and when we cover in the class you go uh, after going by, um, you know after the class you should read the chapter and go through the contents of the chapter in case you have any issue you can come back in the class and you can ask your queries okay now second is the next is the revision test paper now revision test paper very soon these revision test papers for all the papers will be posted on the website maybe by end of this week you can expect to get the revision test papers for the may 2024 examination what these paper these revision test papers have they have selected questions for revision of the students though they are not in the question paper pattern but they have selected questions sometimes in law papers they have few questions based on amendments or they have few questions testing your understanding of the concept application of the various provisions is tested so after you are uh, you are done with your syllabus i would request you to go through the revision test papers and uh, practice the questions which are given there which assess your preparation for the examination mock test papers mtp is a question paper which is based on the paper pattern that means the question as they as they will appear in your examination the way they will appear or come in the examination you can go for a 3 hour examination like condition paper you can appear in the exam in the question in the paper 
uh, just sitting at one place in one go for three hours and attempting the paper and then you can check your answers through the answers which are provided on the website this is the mock test paper but this will be after uh, maybe in the month of march or april you will be getting these mock test papers so first of all you complete your entire syllabus then go through revision test paper and then go through the mock test paper hmm some students are saying that new amendments are not there on the website new amendments are not there in the study material see i am telling you that where will you get the new amendments it is there in the statutory update for may 2024 examination and in fact i will take you to those amendments now that they are posted on the website separately which says statutory update for paper 3b indirect taxes so we will be uh, you have to cover those amendments apart from study material through this Uh, statutory update this crossword puzzle uh, ashok will not come in the exam it is only for your practice and it is only for uh, testing your retention of the concepts in the uh, this test uh, concepts in the chapter it will not come in the exam and uh, pooja is asking that uh, she is giving exam on in november 2024 so that this material is relevant for you also pooja only thing is that you have to refer the statutory update which will come separately for the uh, the statutory update will be there a separate statutory update will be there for the november 2024 examination so you have to refer that let me take you through the uh, to the statutory update where will you get the statutory update on the website on the students portal we have bus knowledge portal then uh, on this bus knowledge portal if you see you will get all the bus publications at one place your study material your amendments then uh, the rtps everything is there I think some issue is there with the system because of which this background noise is coming. Please bear with me for some time. I think uh, in, we'll be taking a break at around seven o'clock, and I will try to resolve this uh, background noise problem. But as and when it comes, you please keep me updated so that if I can reduce that, I will help you in that, that also. The amendments and developments. So go to amendments, and in intermediate you will find the amendments of section three B. So the, these amendments are there. they cover the amendments made by the notifications and circulars from 1st of may 2023 to 31st of october 2023 and apart from that one more thing which i want to apprise you is that in case of your study material if you see the uh, the amendments made by the Finance Act 2023. As I told you that when study material was print printed, amendments made by Finance Act 2023 were not effective at that time. So what we did was we incorporated those amendments at the end of the chapter. We gave those amendments made by Finance Act 2023 at the end of the chapter, and we had mentioned there that in case these amendments become applicable, you will be informed separately. So this is how we have informed by way of this. Uh, Uh, the statutory update it is mentioned in the statutory update that apart from this statutory update you have to read the amendments which are given at the end of the chapter by way of uh, amendments made by finance act given at the end of the chapter okay let me see some chapter which has a uh, statutory um, amendments made by finance act 2023 so that you can get an idea that yes how you have to cover these amendments just bear with me i am taking you to the amendment see these are the this is how the amendment made by finance act is covered at the end of each chapter which has some amendment made by finance act 2023 then there the we have given it in a tabular form existing provision as well as the provision made by the finance act 
Now the comparison is given to you. So what you have to do is since now these amendments have become effective, what we have given here is that these amendments as and when they become effective, you will be notified and you have to study it for your examination. So please note that for May 2024 examination, all the amendments which we have given at the end of the chapter, which are made by Finance Act, now they have become effective and they are relevant for your examination. So you should go for these, you should read those amendments instead of the existing provisions which are given in, on the left side on the second column, you have to read the provisions as amended by the Finance Act 2023. So you have to replace your portion, the existing portion by the amended portion in your chapter and you have to read the amended provision now. Okay, so this is uh, how the uh, amendments have to be read. So statutory update which is given on the website plus the Finance Act 2023 amendments which are given at the end of the chapter, they should replace your content in the chapter which is at the relevant place. Okay. So now we come to the next part of the uh, presentation. But next is the Saranj. Now let me take you to Saranj also. The Saranj is a summarized form of the goods and services tax in pictorial form and it is a colored presentation of the summary. So again on BOS knowledge portal, we can see the Saranj last minute referencer. Here if you can go to indirect tax laws. Now this is for entire indirect tax laws. For intermediate you have to go for the, um, for intermediate you have to go for the select portion only because you know that under intermediate we have the portion till uh, this returns. So you have to go for the selected portion only. This you, care you have to take while referring to this Saranj that you have to refer only to the portion which is relevant to you. This subject classes will complete, uh, there will be around uh, 30 classes, 30-31 classes which we'll be having for this um, intermediate paper and I think uh, we have, the scheduler is already hosted on the website so you'll get an idea that how much classes, how much portion will we be covering in February, substantial portion we'll be covering in February and they will go till March. Amendments will be explained during the class only. So you need not re refer these amendments on your own. Whatever uh, you know, chapters or whatever topics we'll be dealing with, we'll take those topics along with all the amendments which are relevant for May 24 examination. They will be amend updated by Finance Act 2023. They will be updated by the uh, notifications and circulars. In fact, there is a CGST Amendment Act 2023, which came in uh, August last year. So that is also applicable for your examination and that will also be taken care in the class that is there in the statutory update also to the extent it is relevant for intermediate students. So don't worry these classes will be complete in all respects. Only thing for the uh, you know uh, printed material or the content you have to refer to study material plus statutory update. These two publications you have to refer and in case you want to see the uh, summary of the chapters in the in the you know pictorial form diagrams flowcharts then you can refer you can refer saranj also it is there in your at the end of your chapters also but this saranj actually is updated till 31st october 2023 so this particular summary is updated till 31st october that is relevant for may 2024 examination so you can refer this summary it will uh, create your interest in the chapter also. So once you are through with the chapter, you can go through this summary to have a recapitulation of the concepts learned during the chapter. Yes, Saranj, um, Harshit Saranj has the final content also. So you need to be careful, I am telling you. So you can either, you what you can do is you can see your uh, uh, study material, let us recapitulate portion and accordingly you can see that which all portions you have to leave for the May, uh, intermediate examination or one way is that you can refer the let us recapitulate portion which is given at the end of the chapter. In each chapter we have given the summary. Only thing is that it is not in the colored format but yes and it is updated till 30th April 2023. So uh, her, Jaron, Raj is asking that uh, in future all the amendments will be uploaded on BOS portal or we have to follow with news updates also. No, all uh, updates which are relevant for your examination will be comp compiled and web hosted at one place. So you need not refer all the amendments at uh, on the website or news updates, no. We'll be compiling all the amendments which are applicable for a particular examination and we will be hosting it on the website. So for May 24 examination, all the amendments are already hosted. Those who are going to appear for November 2024 examination, please note that all the amendments will be 
compiled subsequently because for them the amendments which are applicable are till 30th April 2024. So that period has not yet lapsed. So th those amendments will be compiled after that period and they will be web hosted so you can refer them. Saransh is updated till 30th, 31st October 2023. But yes, you have to take care that you have to refer only the amendments which are applicable for intermediate student, hope, intermediate examination. Hope I'm not going very, I'm not very fast in speaking. You are able to understand what I am saying. If anybody finds it, please let me know. Ayush is saying, can you explain in Hindi? Ayush, I will try to explain in Hindi in Hindi. But actually, regional, southern region ke students hai, they find it difficult to understand when I speak in Hindi. Whatever I English, if I will speak in Hindi, then I will repeat it repeat in English. Mein bhi. Whatever I speak in Hindi, that I will take care in English also. So don't worry if I am saying something in Hindi, that doesn't mean it is not covered in English. I will try to... Uh, uh, you know, trans go to Hindi also in between. Actually, some voice, some noise is there in my system. I suppose some problem is there. I will try to, I, as I told you, we will take a break at around 7 o'clock and I will try to rectify this problem. So, please bear with me for that time. Background noise is getting louder. Okay. So now we move further in our uh, presentation. Let us move further. I will try to speak a bit louder so that this noise um, does not create any problem for you. Now we come to section wise and skill wise weightage. As I told you that I will go through the syllabus also that what is the difference between the old syllabus and the new syllabus or the syllabus under the old uh, scheme and syllabus under new scheme because the weightage has increased from 40 to 50 weightage. 40 to 50 is so, could syllabus be hoga. Some syllabus would have also in, uh, been added. So, that we have to go through ki what all has been added. And secondly, we will go through the study guidelines. Now, what is the study guidelines? Study guidelines study guidelines is uh, the study guidelines is the uh, top are the topics which have been excluded from the syllabus. Okay. So, those topics I will be explaining you and then I will let you know that how uh, you have to integrate everything because something will be there in your, uh, you know, syllabus, but that will not be a part of your examination or you will not be tested on that on your examination because generally, you know, we all know that what we have to do, read, but sometimes we are not aware that what we do not have to read. So that is, in fact, uh, more important that something we, because our uh, approach should be examination focused along with understanding the subject. So we should do both the things simultaneously. We should understand the subject also and we should have an examination focused approach also. So this study guidelines are for that only that these are the topics which you do not have to study for your examination and in most of the cases these topics will not be there in your study material also though they form part of your syllabus but for ease of the uh, due to the nature of these topics either they are very complex or they are not relevant for the students or they are they just amount to rote learning. So that is why we have excluded those topics from the purview of the syllab uh, syllabus and these, this is the list which we had provided you. So we will once uh, one by one go through all, both of them. First is section wise and skill wise weighted. So let us see where it is hosted on the website. The section in skill wise weightage is given on the BOS knowledge portal itself.
see this is the section and uh, this is the section wise weightage for the paper uh, 3b goods and services tax first of all you should know that the weightage of the paper has increased from 40 to 50 theek hai gst is uh, the uh, weightage of now uh, neha is asking that the weightage of taxation paper is of 100 marks so gst is not a separate 100 marks paper gst is a part of taxation one part is income tax and another part is goods and services tax both of them carry 50 marks each so this 50 marks of gst has this much course content as i already told you that earlier the weightage of gst portion or the indirect tax portion was 40 marks now it has increased to 50 marks so there is addition of few topics first of all I, let me tell you which all topics have been added in the gst paper at intermediate level for may 2024 onwards these are first topic which has been added is the uh, the place of supply earlier the place of supply was not there now it has been added in your syllabus earlier we used to give in this uh, question itself that whether a particular transaction is an interstate transaction or an intrastate transaction this place of supply concept is very important for determining the nature of transaction whether that transaction is an interstate transaction or intrastate transaction i hope most of you would be, would have heard this term interstate intrastate some of you might be knowing also what it is actually but when we cover the concepts we will try to understand what the interstate and intrastate is then the next topic which has been added is the accounts and records that is the uh, the accounts and records which are being prepared under GST law under the payment of tax chapter what we have this time included is TDS and TCS provisions so the TDS and TCS provisions were earlier excluded by way of study guidelines now they have been included in it so these are the three new topics which have been added first is place of supply second is the uh, con second is accounts and records and third one is TDS and TCS provisions. These three new chapters or three new topics have been added in the syllabus because the weightage has increased. Yes, uh, Divya, you have a fair understanding of uh, this inter and intrastate that when we say interstate, it means two different states or union territories are involved. When we say intrastate, it is within the same state. Okay. So at this level, Abdul, we have to read both income tax as well as goods and services tax. It is part of taxation paper. And if you see the weightage of each of these sections, again that disturbance is coming. Um, Manish, Manish, uh, can we have a break for 10 minutes? Uh, so that I can, uh, in the meantime, I can resolve this problem. Na? I hope all of you will bear with me. Uh, I will try to resolve this problem in the meantime. So uh, we are breaking. We are taking a break of ten minutes for this. Please take a break of ten minutes for this.
ठीक है वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स नाउ वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद प्रेजेंटेशन अगेन hope now there is uh, no such issue which we were earlier facing of the uh, background noise so please let me know through your answers in chat that uh, now you are not facing that issue and please let me know that uh, whether this uh, website is visible to you or not i think i have shared only the uh, ppt i suppose this time so i have to change it to that to change it to screen okay now divya is saying voice is clear so i am going by her word and i am taking you again to that section wise weightage so what we had done in section wise weightage is we had gone through the uh, difference in the old syllabus and new syllabus this i am doing only for the benefit of the students who are converting from old scheme if you, in case you are a new scheme student then you will have no issue in that because in that case you will be knowing uh, you will be going through this syllabus only so then there will be no issue in that okay now uh, we'll see the section wise weightage for various topics okay see the, under gst law we have the substantive provisions substantive provisions means which are the core aspects of gst which gave you an understanding of the law gst law gst concepts so that is the sub, they, they are called the substantive provisions of gst so that is section 2 section 2 is this section that is the most important section of the entire subject and that has the highest weightage you can see that it has a weightage of 50 to 80% it has a range of 50 to 80% so at least half of the paper will be from this section and you can understand the importance of these concepts and if you see the uh, topics here na they covered almost all the core aspects of gst the levy of gst then supply and then charge of gst exemption okay and then uh, composition levy when we have classification place of supply time value input tax credit so all these are the core aspects of gst once you know these aspects you know gst then uh, what is remaining is the procedural aspects and the enforcement provisions now enforcement provisions are not there in your syllabus at intermediate level they are tested at final level and the so the procedural aspects that is registration invoicing e-way bill accounts and records payment and returns they are of the weightage of 20 to 45% they are section 3 so entire syllabus is divided into three sections second section the most important section that is the substantive provision third pro third uh, section is the tax invoice that is the procedural uh, aspect so jitne procedural aspects hain sab section 3 mein aate hain unki weightage hai 20 se 45% जितने सब्सटैंडिव प्रोविजन हैं सेक्शन टू में आते हैं 50 टू 80 परसेंट तो कितने इंपॉर्टेंट है ये सब्सटैंडिव प्रोविजन आपको इजी से पता चलता है और ये भी समझ आता है कि आपको अपनी स्टडी सबसे ज्यादा फोकस कहाँ करनी है टॉपिक्स विच यू हैव टू फोकस ऑन इज फर्स्ट सेक्शन टू एंड देन सेक्शन थ्री दो लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट इज सेक्शन वन विच इज जीएसटी लॉ एंड इंट्रोडक्शन इंक्लूडिंग कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल एस्पेक्ट तो देखा जाए तो जीएसटी का जो आधार है वट द बेस ऑफ जीएसटी इज the constitutional aspects and an introduction to what gst law is actually what we are going to discuss today today we uh, will try to cover as much as possible in in chapter 1 and the portion which will be which will be left today because i don't want to rush through the topics that will be taken in the uh, the class on 31st okay so we'll take the remaining portion on 31st because i want to be thorough with the topic which we are taking we'll try to cover it in day after tomorrow's class so first section is gst law introduction then substantive provisions and then the procedural law this is how your entire syllabus is divided into and this is how your weightage in the question paper will consist of then we have the uh, then let us see the this uh, section wise and skill wise weightage mm, this is after section wise study guidelines now this was skill, skill wise section wise weightage skill wise weightage i have to tell you section wise weightage was this but before that let us see the study guidelines now as i already told you study guidelines will apprise you of the topics which are not relevant for your examination or which are excluded from your syllabus so they are very important to know 
in this study guidelines initially we have explained that what is relevant for you that is finance act 2023 i already told you all these things i have already told you that this is uh, 31st october is your cut off date then the cgst and sgst igst amendment act which came on which became effective from 1st october 2023 it came in august but it became effective from 1st october 2023 it is also applicable for may 24 it is covered in statutory update now we come to the exclusions from your syllabus first is your rate of tax of uh, applicable on goods as well as applicable on supply of services because they just test your road learning of those rates and we do not expect our students to learn the complete list long list of rates of goods or services that will be provided in your questions so you have to just know that how to how you have to apply that rate to a particular transaction but you do not need to remember that rate that will be given in your question then we come to the reverse charge provision applicable on the goods if it is a reverse charge uh, provision or reverse charge uh, mechanism which is applicable on services that is there in your syllabus that is covered in charge of gst chapter but as regards the reverse charge provision the sup supply of goods tax on which is payable under reverse charge under section 93 for goods it is not there in your syllabus similarly for igst rates of taxes for goods services and reverse charge it is not applicable both for cgst as well as for igst rates of taxes as well as reverse charge on goods is not applicable similarly exemption on goods is not applicable for your examination only services are there they are covered in the chapter exemption from gst all these things are not given in the study material also we have not included them and any reference to them any idea which we have given to you there we have specifically mentioned there that this is only for your reference this is only for your understanding you do not have to re uh, retain these things or you do not have to retain these concepts for the examination so these concepts if we have given some overview in the chapter we have specifically mentioned that they are not relevant for the examination then we come to the place of supply now place of supply you know this has this time it has been newly introduced so the place of supply provisions with regard to domestic transactions are there in your syllabus but with regard to international transactions is not covered at the intermediate level it is covered at the final level so place of supply of goods imported into or export from india is excluded place of supply of services where location of supplier or location of recipient is outside india because these transactions some somehow or other they involve the international transaction so any place of supply which has to be determined for an international transaction that is not there in your syllabus and these topics pertain to that only so uh, now basic concepts of time of supply in basic concepts the provisions relating to change in rate of tax is uh, not applicable for you that is section 14 and in case of value of supply valuation rules are not applicable for you so you and these things are not covered these topics are not covered in the study material also please remember then we have the basic concepts of the itc now basic concepts of itc in uh, since we are covering basic concepts of itc at intermediate so we have excluded rule 42 and 43 which cover the uh, reversal provisions of uh, inputs input services and capital goods so these topics have been excluded owing to their complexity at the intermediate level you just need to know how you need to take the credit the basic concepts of input tax credit to the extent they have been covered in the study material in fact for intermediate students i will specifically advise them to go through the study material for the coverage with regard to a topic and you will know the exact purview within which you have to uh, read or you have to study for a particular topic input tax provisions with regard to in uh, the job worker with regard to input service distributor and uh, the input service reversal mechanism for gold ore but it's a very specific provision it is not applicable for your examination in composition levy there are certain rates of taxes but they are very specific there are three rates of taxes in fact two uh, there are three categories for which the rates of taxes have been prescribed so they are applicable for your examination in fact all these things we will be covering time and again we'll be we'll covering the specific chapter but just to give you an overview that yes these are the things you do not have to study while preparing for the examination here the reference of start update is there the link is also provided these are posted these study guidelines are posted on the ICI website okay anusha is asking what is the difference between pgbp and gst 
see anusha pgbp is a uh, tax which is charged on the business income of a particular individual in fact when i uh, tell you the difference when in during the course of this uh, presentation when we i take you through the difference between the the direct tax and indirect tax so you will come to know pgbp is a direct tax pgbp is what it is a direct tax it is an income tax and uh, gst is a business tax gst is a indirect tax so how they are being charged it is on the pgbp is on the income of an of a person or an individual or a company and this uh, gst is charged on a particular transaction it is on every transaction which is taking place in a business but then there are exemptions and uh, then we have the itc mechanism here which is not there in pgbp there are two entirely different uh, arenas so uh, let us now move to the presentation so how to derive maximum benefit from these classes see first of all go through the chapter notes before the class or that is what i told you that please come prepared in the class okay then attend the class carefully each and every concept ask your doubts then and there itself so that you do not leave you not you don't go back with your doubts and after reading the chapter whatever doubts you have come back with those doubts in the next class so that after the end of the classes you have completed each and every portion of gst and you are completely prepared with gst then you can go for rtp you can go for mtp or any other kind of these mock series so from study material you have to go through the relevant portion you have to go through let us recapitulate portion or if you are comfortable you have time you should prepare your own notes i always recommend students to prepare their own short notes because we have given you summary we have given you in form of saransh in form of uh, summary at the end of the chapter also let us recapitulate but the notes which you prepare on your own they are the best because you do not, do not need to remember those notes you they will be in your memory when you prepare them they get imprinted in your memory so when you revise those notes you will just take few you have to glance at your uh, notes and you will recall everything but it depends on the time which is available with you we have given you all kind of resources we have given you saransh as well as let us recapitulate so it's up to you what time you have and what do you actually prefer and at last at the last of each chapter you have to read test your knowledge questions you have to go through test your knowledge questions solve them on your own and then compare your answers with the suggested answers provided at the end and after each chapter you have to go through the crossword puzzle also and you have to go through all the mcq quizzes so that you can test your understanding of the chapter i will uh, in fact rtp questions maybe i might cover some of the rtp questions but uh, mtp questions because mtp will be after maybe in march or april so rtp questions few rtp questions we might cover here or at the end of the these classes we will have we have some problem solving sessions so there we might cover these rtp and mtp questions rtp definitely it can be covered mtp to the extent uh, any mtp which have, would have which would have been hosted on the website we'll cover those questions uh section 3a and section 3b will be two separate sections you have to attempt on two different sheets and there will be no jumbled questions you have you are not you will not be left with the quiz to uh, guess whether it is an income tax question or it is a gst question there will be two separate sections um uh, pdf of each chapter uh, swati will be there on the website as i have already told you on bos knowledge portal the entire study material is hosted so pdf of that every chapter is available today also if you want to refer you want to download you can download the pdf of all the chapters you can get the hard copy of the latest study material also okay mtp will be most probably in march and april and uh, these these mtps you can either appear on the uh, through online portal also or you can go to the branch and appear for them so you know tax now we come to the tax so what is a tax tax is actually a monetary burden or a monetary obligation which has been put by the government on the individuals or on any property owner and it is a compulsory obligation so it is not a voluntary donation voluntary contribution by an individual it is something which the government has put onus on you to contribute to the uh, welfare of the society see what chanakya has to say for the tax is collect taxes from the citizens as honey bees collect nectar from the flowers gently and without inflicting pain so this is how an idle taxation system should be that you are collecting taxes from the people and they are not getting the pinch of it 
they are not feeling pain of it. So just like honeybee collect nectar from the flowers, they don't get affected by it and honeybee's work is also done. So same way taxes should be taken from the citizens in such a manner that it does not hamper their, uh, their lives, it does not hamper their day-to-day -day style. This is the ideal way. Now, the importance of uh, taxes is given by Mr. Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, he says that taxes, after all, are dues that we pay for the privileges of membership in an organized society. So, this is actually what the taxes are for. Why do governments impose taxes? So, governments impose taxes because they... This image. Governments impose taxes because they have to take care of the essential public services. They have to provide the basic amenities to the society, to the people of the country. So that is why they impose the taxes. We said taxes are monetary obligation. Nobody is voluntarily paying the taxes, but they have to pay taxes because that means they are very important. We need to... Nectar matlab shahid. Uh, just a minute, I will keep on taking queries side by side so that it is not left. Uh, Narayanam is saying, how to view chapter weightage in BOS portal? Narayanam, I told you that in BOS knowledge portal, we have a separate tab for each thing. In fact, I will just have a, we'll take two minutes and we'll see how this BOS knowledge portal looks like so that whatever I have shown you today, whatever publications I have shown you today, all these publications are available on BOS knowledge portal. See. So you have to go to ICI website and you have to look for BOS Knowledge Portal. On BOS Knowledge Portal, you will find your new study material, Saransh, then Students Journal is there, subject-wise capsules which are appearing, your statutory update is there in amendments or developments. Uh, you are able, I hope you are able to see the, uh, the website now. So revision test papers will get hosted on this tab and we are expecting them soon. Then study guidelines is here and this is the section and skill wise weightage which is available. So you can see the chap no, chapter, so you are talking about chapter wise weightage. Chapter wise weightage is not available in the um, this uh, paper. You have to see the, we have segregated the entire uh, topic or entire uh, syllabus into three sections. So each section has a weightage but each chapter does not have a specific weightage. Entire section has a weightage and you will find that almost all the Topics are somewhere or the other, they are being tested in the examination. You can go through the past examinations, though the new paper has a different weightage. So we can expect new things in the new paper in May 2024 examination. But the type of questions, if you want to see, you can have a reference. So this is what the US Knowledge Portal is comprising of. You have all the material which has been provided by the Board of Studies available on this US Knowledge Portal. So I advise you also, or every one of you, that you should go through this VOS Knowledge Portal regularly. Prashant is asking, why ma'am, different types of taxes on same income, direct and indirect taxes? Actually, uh, Prashant, this is the type of taxation system we have been following since ages. And uh, as for the governments, they are not the taxes on same income. They say we are tax and one way we are taxing the income of the individual on one on other side, we are taxing a particular transaction. Though it sometimes amounts to direct and in, in, if you talk about indirect taxes, there is no tax on tax. But if you talk about two types of taxes, then same amount, there is a possibility it can get taxed. But that is how the taxation system is devised. So let us come back to the topic before moving further that why governments impose taxes. So I have got few answers from the few uh, students. Pratesh is saying to develop infrastructure. Yes, Pratesh, very true that to develop the infrastructure, to build roads, to build bridges, then the railway stations. Anything for public utility, anything for the benefit of the public. The government is spending money on education. Government is spending money on healthcare. Then the uh, transportation for maintaining public transportation. Then social welfare programs like old age pensions is there. Then uh, the Ayushman scheme or other uh, the health benefit schemes are there. Public departments are there. So government need money for everything. And most important, last but not the least, is the defense. So government needs money to maintain the police personnel, air force. Navy, then Army. So for everything, they need money. And where would they get this money from? The primary source is because the government 
generally charges very low for all the services which it provides very subsidized rates are available uh, these sub services or goods are available at very subsidized rates to the general public so they get money from the tax revenue this is the primary source so if you see every year in budget the finance minister presents the uh, the expenditure statement also that whatever expenditure whatever new schemes they have public welfare schemes they are going to bring during the year and they tell about the this uh, taxation revenue uh, the schemes also that whatever tax amendments or tax proposals will be there which will be implemented at this point of time during the budget so this is the the main revenue which is coming for all these uh, welfare schemes is from the tax revenue and see that is why this taxation or this taxation system or this paper or this tax is so important about so it is it is to meet welfare anmol is telling to meet public expenses neha is telling for welfare of the society mamta to get revenue for public expenditure anmol is telling to meet government expenditures you all are right ashok is selling telling for better facilities to citizens yes very true so tax is contributing towards the welfare of the society which prashant is telling me and he is absolutely right so it is an obli uh, aparna is saying it is an obligation that is levied using resources of a nation it is an obligation which is put on the person to uh, contribute towards the nation actually i would say it in this manner so tax is the income source of the government farti you are right and uh, what is the source of revenue for government except tax collections you know government charges for its services also it's not so that government does not charge anything for its services if you go for uh, getting a license uh, for your uh, it's a driving license or you go for a passport so for everything the government charges you some amount it's not so you remember for everything you are being charged something sometimes that amount is for uh, is due for the services it is the uh, amount which is actually uh, spent by the government on the services sometimes they charge subsidized amount from you so that means the government has to there are some sources of uh, money for the government revenue for the government but this tax revenue is the major source because there are many services many uh, as uh, you know uh, expenditure for which government does not charge anything they only spend like defense they only spend money on that so they need money from the taxpayers uh, um, you know pockets for all these expenses so now we come to the direct and indirect taxes that is what is the difference between a direct tax and indirect tax direct tax is a tax which is levied on a particular person or an individual that is that means it is directly paid by an individual and it is directly paid to the government from that individual so there is a one to one correlation that mr x or x company is paying a tax and it is paying to the government this much tax on its income this is the income of mr x and he is paying that tax whereas the uh, indirect tax is a tax which is actually borne by a different person and it is paid to the government by a different person or you can say it is levied on a different person like for example the a person is selling goods so the supplier is depositing the tax with the government whereas it is actually being paid by the consumer so the burden or the final uh, you know pinch of the tax is coming to the final consumer ultimate consumer whereas it is deposited by the uh, deposited to the government by the by uh, seller paid by buyer deposited by seller so to buyer this burden is not directly coming when he goes for any uh, purchasing anything For receiving any service, then indirectly this tax is being collected from him, and many a times the person is not even aware that he is being taxed on a particular transaction. So in direct tax, the burden of tax can not be shifted to any other person. See in this diagram also, this person is carrying the burden of tax on himself, whereas in indirect tax, the burden of tax is being shifted to the ultimate consumer. Burden of tax is borne by the ultimate consumer. So I am getting so many responses from all of you. Vishnu, Abhishek, Neha, Divya, Ankur, Mr. V, all of you are giving responses, and I am very happy that you all are interacting in this uh, class. You are participating in this class because this way you can learn better. So keep posting your answers during the session, I'll, and I will try to take your answers also. So we are now clear with why taxes are being collected, what is tax, what is a direct tax, what is an indirect tax. In fact, direct taxes are very progressive in nature. Progressive when we say it means that the person who has a higher income. he is paying higher tax a person who has a lower income is paying lower taxes so it is you know in, in way it is a justified form of a taxation that lower income group is paying lower taxes higher income group is paying higher taxes indirect taxes 
uh, is termed to be a regressive tax. That means either though it is immaterial whether you are rich or you are poor, a particular amount of tax has been decided. If you are consuming goods, if you are consuming services, you have to pay the decided amount of tax on that particular transaction, on that particular activity, that particular service. So this is the difference between a direct tax and indirect tax. Now we come to the next. GST is very important in our lives. Why? Uh, GST is very important. Why? Because GST is impacting every day's life. You know, you are, you all are students, but you know, you all must be paying GST. Is it right or not? You all are paying GST in some way or the other. You all are, but income tax, most of you must not be paying because you are not actually earning anything right now. So GST, when I say direct tax, most in common type of direct tax is income tax. And in indirect taxes, we have GST, we have customs duty, then we have the entertainment tax and uh, uh, the this um, basic custom duty, then uh, the integrated taxes there. So different types of uh, taxes are there for the indirect taxes. And in your day-to-day -day life, how you are being impacted by GST? Suppose you went to a, uh, celebrate your birthday in a restaurant and you uh, pay the bill. So you are paying GST on that bill. In that bill itself, GST is included. You're going for watching a movie with your friends. Then GST is included on the uh, movie ticket. In, in, is included in the movie ticket. You're going for a trip uh, to some to some hill station and you're going by air. So in that air ticket also GST is included. So uh, yes, everyone is saying we are paying GST. So I'm very happy to know that you all know that you are paying GST. And many examples I have quoted. Some examples can you if you're going by uh, train in an air conditioned coach, if you are traveling, then you are paying GST on that particular uh, this in ticket GST is included so GST is there in every aspect of life and you are being associated you are being contributing to GST exchequer but income tax we pay only when we actually earn something so GST impacts everyone so it's you can understand the importance of GST it is a very significant contributor to government exchequer it makes a very uh, significant contribution to the total tax revenue of the country and that is why it is a very important taxation system for the country now let us understand the concept of GST. Now before we start understanding the concept of GST, I'm trying to take your queries and I will try to take some of your queries at the end of the session if I leave some of these queries because I'm getting so many responses. So I will try to take most of them. Ma'am on import GST plus customs duty, both payment mandatory. You will come to know Priyanka this later on but right now I'm telling you GST is IGST plus customs duty you have to pay. So most of the people pay indirect taxes and uh, I'm getting so many answers and also some queries might not left in that. So before we uh, go through the concept of GST, so you know, do, do you, any of you know that which is the first country which implemented GST? Any answers? How many types of GST you will come to know in this session itself? Please bear with me. And uh, we have to pay GST on purchase of every product or service. Those products and services which are not exempt, then you have to pay GST. Certain products, certain services are exempted from GST. Otherwise, whatever comes within the purview of GST, that is subject to GST. So you have to pay GST. So which is the first country which implemented GST in the world? Very good. I think many of you would have gone through study material. And it shows, and I'm happy that you are going through study material or even if you know it otherwise, then it is very good. France is the country which implemented GST for the first time in the year 1954. And after, you see, after so many years, almost 70 years, this has extended to 160 countries, more than 160 countries now this law has extended. So you can understand that how beneficial, how important this law is. That is why it has been extended to so many countries, if all almost uh, more than half of the countries in the world have adopted this GST law. So there must be some benefits which are accruing to the system or to the countries because of this. Some people are mentioning India also. So India, we have lately or recently, we have uh, in five, uh, six years back, we have adopted it or almost now seven. But uh, France was the first country which 
adopted GST or which implemented GST in its country. Okay, so I have got so many correct answers. Okay, is it an MCQ? Um, Divya is saying it is an MCQ. Not aware. So let us understand the concept of GST first of all. Okay, now G, uh, the concept of GST because then only we'll get into the other nuances of GST that what actually are the benefits of GST, which all laws are subsumed in GST, what is pre-GST regime, post-GST regime, all these things we'll, uh, you know, we'll discuss afterwards. But before that, we'll first of all discuss what is the concept of GST. Hmm? So GST is a destination-based consumption tax. Now, when I say destination-based consumption tax, what does it actually mean? Destination-based means that GST is levied in the state or in um, the GST is levable at the place where the goods are actually consumed. Okay, it is a consumption tax. So where the goods are actually consumed, GST or the tax is levied at that point. So it is different from VAT and it is different from CST where the tax was, was origin based tax. Now when we say origin based tax means the producing state where the goods uh, were produced or where the goods were manufactured or the state from where the goods were supplied. The tax was levied at that point of time. So that is why it is different from GST. Uh, it is different from VAT. It is different from CST. It is a destination-based consumption tax levied at a place where the goods are actually or services are actually consumed. Second is value-added tax. The most important aspect of GST, most important aspect, which says that the tax is levied only on the value which is being added at each stage of the supply chain. You know, your supply chain, it starts from the manufacture and it, uh, you know, it gets ended at the distribution, final distribution to the ultimate consumer. So there are so many stages in between. Like, like first of all, the goods are manufactured, then uh, the goods are given to wholesaler, then it is given to retailer, then retailer again can give it to some other retailer or small shops and then it reaches the final consumer so at each of these stage the tax is being levied because the goods are passing from one person to another person they are being sold by one person to another and the value of the goods are also changing then accordingly the tax amount is also changing so when we say value added tax it means the tax at each of these stages will be levied only on the value which is being added on each stage and not on the entire value again and again taxes being levied now, this we will understand with the help of an example. See, suppose this is a very simple example. In your book, there is a comprehensive big equation, big illustration which is given to you. We'll discuss it at the end of the session if time permits. But here it is a simple example to understand the concept of GST. What When, when I say value-added tax, what I actually mean? Purchase, suppose a person purchases a goods of 100 rupees value. Rate of tax we are assuming to be 10%. For the sake of simplicity, we are taking 10% rate. So tax is rupees 10. So he paid a tax of rupees 10 when he purchased the goods. Now when he sold the goods, the value was rupees 150. This could be because of some manufacture which has taken place, some profit element he has added. So whatever be the case, he purchased the goods for rupees 100 and he sold them for rupees 150 and included the included in the uh, value. So now his value became 150. So when he sold those goods, when he is actually selling those goods, the tax which he is going to pay will be of rupees 15 because 10% is the rate of tax. Okay. Now when I say value added tax, what does it actually mean? He has to uh, pay only the difference between the tax paid at the input and tax paid on the output. That means whatever tax he is paying on in purchasing the goods can be utilized for paying the tax uh, to be paid at the on the sale. Whatever tax he is paying on the purchase of goods or on the inward supplies can be used for paying the tax on the outward supplies. He paid 10 rupees on purchases. He can use it for paying 15 rupees tax on the sale. So finally, he has to pay only rupees 5. This is the difference amount he has to pay. Now, how it is a value added tax can be understand when we consider it in a, understand this example in a different manner. Let us see. Um, Smita, you will get these PPTs after the end of the session. I will share it with uh, all the students. So don't worry. Don't try to copy or note down anything. Just try to understand what I am telling. Don't uh, don't write anything. Don't copy anything. Okay. Now we are understanding how it is a value added tax. Okay. Now purchase of goods 
is of 100 rupees. Same example, I am telling you in a different manner. I am explaining you how it is a value added tax. So, uh, 100 rupees, we have purchased the goods for rupees 100. Now, we are selling them for 150. So, what is the value which has been added? Is transaction mein kitni value add hai? Kitna uh, difference aya? 100 rupees ka humne saman kharida, 150 rupees mein becha. So, 50 rupees ki humari value addition hai. Yani, 50 rupees ka difference hai. जो कि हमारी परचेज और सेल में आया तो वो डिफरेंस आपकी प्रॉफिट एलिमेंट भी हो सकता है वो आपने मैन्युफैक्चर किया आपने कुछ उसके ऊपर ऐड किया पैकिंग किया कुछ भी हो सकता है उसकी वजह से पचास रुपए का डिफरेंस आपके सामान में आ गया है तो आपने सौ रुपए का खरीदा डेढ़ सौ का बेचा पचास रुपए आपका वैल्यू एडिशन है अब आप, आपका टैक्स दस है तो मैं कहती हूँ ये वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स है ना हाउ कैन बी टेस्ट दैट इट इज अ वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स आप ये कैसे चेक कर सकते हो कि वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स ही है मैंने अपना वैल्यू एडिशन निकाला वैल्यू एडिशन कितना है रुपीज फिफ्टी हाउ वी हाउ आई गॉट इट सेल प्राइस माइनस परचेज प्राइस पचास रुपए का वैल्यू एड हुआ रेट ऑफ टैक्स टेन परसेंट सो टैक्स बिकम्स अल्टीमेटली फाइव रुपीज ओके नाउ दिस इज वॉट द वैल्यू हैज बीन दिस इज फाइव रुपीज इज माई टैक्स तो और जब मैंने ऊपर निकाला था तो भी फाइव रुपीज ही आ रहा था दैट मीन्स की दिस इज द टैक्स विच इज बींग पेड ऑन दी वैल्यू विच इज एडेड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर ट्रांजेक्शन इससे ये समझ में आता है कि हमारा जो टैक्स है वो सिर्फ वैल्यू एडिशन पर ही लग रहा है हमने इसे दो तरह से इस एग्जाम्पल को समझा पहले हमने इसको नॉर्मल कोर्स में निकाला कि जो मैंने इनपुट्स पे टैक्स परचेज की पे किया था और जो मैं आउटपुट पे टैक्स पे करना करना चाहती हूँ दोनों का मैंने डिफरेंस निकाल लिया और सिर्फ आई पेड द डिफरेंस अमाउंट बिकॉज वो जो मैंने टैक्स विच आई पेड ऑन इनपुट्स और इनवर्ड सप्लाईज आई यूटिलाइज दैट टैक्स फॉर द पेमेंट ऑफ द टैक्स ऑन आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज फिर उसके बाद द अदर वे आई ट्राई टू कम्प्यूट इट कि मैंने सिर्फ वैल्यू एडिशन निकाला और वैल्यू एडिशन पे कितना टैक्स बनता है आई ट्राई टू असर्टेन दैट वो भी सेम आया इसका मतलब ये समझ में आया हमें कि हम जो टैक्स पे कर रहे हैं जीएसटी में वो सिर्फ वैल्यू एडिट पे पे कर रहे हैं बट इट इज नॉट इन द केस ऑफ द कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम हरीश सिंह और हरीश अभी कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम हम नहीं पढ़ रहे हैं वी आर ओनली ऑन द जनरल नो एस्पेक्ट कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम एक बहुत डिफरेंट स्कीम है कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम इज ओनली फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ द स्मॉल टैक्स पेयर्स वो एकदम अलग कॉन्सेप्ट है डोंट गो इनटू दैट अभी आप सब चीजें इकट्ठे मत पढ़ो जीएसटी का मेन जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स ही है कॉम्पोजिशन क्या है कैसे डिफरेंट है हाउ इट बेनिफिट दी टैक्स पेयर दैट वील डिस्कस इन सब्सिक्वेंट क्लासेस ठीक है तो अभी आप वैल्यू एडेड टैक्स पहले समझो देन वील गो टू इन टू कॉम्पोजिशन ओके आई विल एक्सप्लेन द इंटायर कॉन्सेप्ट इन इंग्लिश ऑल्सो Don't worry. So this concept, I think I have explained uh, sufficiently in English and Hindi. I am saying that when I pay the tax on purchases and I set it off against the uh, tax to be paid on sale, it the amount came to be rupees five. Then I computed it the other the other way round. I determined or I tried to ascertain what is the actual value addition in this particular transaction, which is of rupees fifty. I computed tax on that at the rate of ten percent, which came out to rupees five. so this justified or this validated that actually this is a value added tax because in first uh, example or in the first presentation i am trying to find out the difference between the two i am trying to find out the how tax how tax mechanism actually works under gst and in second example i am trying to show you that how it is actually being paid on value addition only okay so how i think this makes you clear that yes it is a tax on value added um, value addition only and because it is a tax on value addition there is a continuous and there is a continuous chain of tax credits as we saw that from wholesaler to retailer or to retailer to fine to uh, to distribute sorry from wholesaler to distributor to retailer and then to final consumer everywhere this tax credit or the credit of the tax paid on the inward supplies is available so uh, under gst there is no break in the chain of credits because earlier under earlier taxation system what used to happen we used to we did not used to get credit for the service of the service tax of the excise duty so there was a break in the chain of tax credit there was break at the manufacturer level after manufacturer level we the, the whatever credit was accumulated till the manufacturer level it never used to go after that ne it never used to go beyond that so there was a break in the chain of credits whereas under gst aapko har stage par credit milta rehta hai to aapka continuous chain of tax credits chalta hai from the production stage till the distribution stage production se lekar jaise jaise credit aapko milta chala jata hai distribution tak aapko pura credit milta rehta hai
Priyanka is asking, why did you take 15 into 10 percent? Because Priyanka, in second example, what I did was, I said, आपको tax कैसे pay करना है? आपको सिर्फ value addition पे tax pay करना है. You have to pay tax only on value addition. That is, 50 rupees was was your value addition. So, this is to justify, you know, under GST we work as per first example only. This is how we are going to work throughout our system. But this is to show you that if I compute tax only on value addition, I take, I compute the value addition amount and I pay tax of 10% on this, then it comes out to be the same amount of tax which I am paying earlier. This is to show you that yes, this is actually a tax on the value addition. We are not going to work out GST in, sec in this manner. That is the second uh, presentation. We are never going to do it like this. We are going to follow the first presentation only. Second way of presenting I have taken only to explain you that yes, this is a tax on value addition. Okay. So we should give only 5 rupees to the government, Gunjan. Okay. Now, uh, there is a chart in the uh, book, in this study material, which is a very elaborate uh, illustration. I will take that at the end of the session. First of all, I, let me complete with the presentation. And I will take you take you through that uh, diagram also and that example also. So burden borne by the uh, final consumer. GST, the burden of GST is finally borne by the consumer only because at each stage, the person will get the credit and he will pay only the differential tax. Now the final accumulated tax, which is there on a particular product or on a particular service will be paid by the final consumer. For this, we have a very good example in the book, in the study material. I will cover it at the end of the session because I have to go to the study material for that. And that this will break my link to this particular PPT. So how this tax is finally born, burden of this tax is borne by the consumer, we'll take it at the end. So no tax cascading. Now what is tax cascading? Tax cascading means tax on tax. We are paying tax on the tax amount also, which is not there under GST. We have just seen that we are paying tax only on the value added. We are not paying any tax on tax. So this is how tax cascading is not there under GST. Now we come to the genesis of GST. Um, now some students are asking, is VAT still there or what was the concept before GST? So let me have give you a quick understanding that what was there before GST. The indirect tax regime before GST is generally referred as pre-GST regime. And this regime which is after GST is the GST regime. So in pre-GST regime, that means when GST was not introduced, at that time, we used to have multiple taxes in India. For example, on manufacture of goods, we used to have central excise duty. Central excise duty was levied on manufacture of goods at the central level. And apart from that, there was state excise duty also. And uh, then value added tax, VAT, was there on the intrastate sale of goods. On the interstate sale of goods, central sales tax was there. And there were many other taxes were there, luxury tax, entertainment tax, and purchase tax, entry tax, uh, octroi, all these taxes. So number of indirect taxes were existing. So what happened, there was such a complex indirect tax taxation system in India. And the moreover, like we saw here, the set off of credit is available at each stage. But there, the credit of one uh, particular uh, tax was not available against other tax. So there was multiplicity, duplicacy of taxes. And that is why there was so much of the tax cascading that government felt that there is a need to integrate all these taxes, subsume all these taxes. And what they did, they took all the taxes, they put it un under a fun umbrella, they put it in a box and they together call it as GST. They put so many indirect taxes, almost all indirect taxes in one basket and they termed it as goods and services tax. Either it is a tax on goods or services, entry, octroi, entertainment tax, everything they put under a single umbrella and it was termed as goods and services tax. These taxes were under pre-GST regime. So VAT and uh, if you VAT, CST, then excise duty, central and state excise duty, if you see you, these terms, you might be hearing today also, but they are on very, very limited products and we generally cover them to a very limited extent to the extent of the understanding of the students only but we generally don't test them we never ask we will never ask you to compute excise duty or the service tax service tax is not there on any of the uh, services but VAT uh, or CST we will never ask you to compute that because that is a pre -G that was majorly in the pre-GST regime now it is on very very limited products I will give you a just idea a glance of the products on which they are uh, still there so, 
now uh, the so what is the genesis of gst how gst was introduced in india so genesis of we'll go through genesis of gst in the year of 2000 the then prime minister mr atal bihari vajpay he introduced the concept of gst he felt that i should introduce gst in my country and he formulated a committee he set up a com uh, committee to formulate a gst model for the country he gave that work or assigned that task to that committee that, that you formulate a uh, Uh, GST model or GST law for the country that how this particular taxation system should be introduced in the country. That committee worked, and in two thousand six, the Union uh, Finance Minister, Mr. P. Jindamram, in during his budget speech in two thousand of two thousand six seven, he announced that we will have GST on first April two thousand ten. But that deadline we missed, and in fact we missed several deadlines. After that, we could not um, the GST could not be materialized. So. Uh, finally, in two thousand fourteen, the GST Constitution Amendment Bill was introduced in Lok Sabha. Now, why this Constitution Amendment Bill was introduced? Because for introduction of GST, we needed a amendment in Constitution. That that we'll cover later on. Why this amendment was needed? So, finally, in September two thousand sixteen, Constitution one hundred first Amendment Act was enacted, and in that very month itself, GST Council was. Formed. GST Council is actually a group of uh, the representatives of all the states, union territories, and it is headed by the finance minister of the country. This particular council is was responsible, and it is still responsible for recommending all the GST legislation: CGST, IGST, SDST, UTGST, GST compensation, CES bill. All these legislations were framed by this particular body. and their first meeting was held in september 2016 this council was formed they had their meeting they formulated all the legislations and by march 2017 they completed this work so in march 2017 all these bills were presented in the parliament and they got enacted both the houses passed them then they got the assent of the president also by april 2017 so by april 2017 we had cgst act igst act duty gst act and gst compensation act what was not there was sgst acts of various states why we did not have them because they were to be passed by each of the states in their legislatures so so, so what happened in their legislative assemblies they had to pass those bills so what, what what happened is that after that the state gst bills were being passed so from april 2017 to 30th june 2017 these bills were passed on and after that on 1st july when all the states have passed their sgst bills also and they became sgst acts then on 1st july 2017 gst law was launched but on that date it was not there in jammu and kashmir jammu and kashmir had not yet passed their sgst legislation and but after 8 days on 8th july 2017 they also came within the purview of gst and they passed jnk uh, See their CGST and IGST ordinances. They passed their SGST Act and CGST and IGST ordinances made GST law applicable to Jammu and Kashmir also. So, if you see the law as on first July two thousand seventeen, it specifically used to mention that it is uh, applicable on all Indian states except Jammu and Kashmir. Now it is applicable on Jammu and Kashmir also. So, now GST, which is on Jammu and Kashmir, is applicable on all Indian states except Jammu and Kashmir. Now it is applicable on Jammu and Kashmir also. ये जो जीएसटी काउंसिल है ये आपके सारे लॉज भी बनाती है लेजिस्लेशन भी बनाती है और सारे रूल्स भी इसी ने ही रिकमेंड किए थे जो रूल्स जो आपको जिन्होंने आपको रजिस्ट्रेशन बताया इन वॉइसिंग अकाउंट्स एंड रिकॉर्ड्स एंड देन दिस पेमेंट रिटर्न ऑल दीज प्रोसीजर्स पर ऑल्सो रिकमेंडेड बाई जीएसटी काउंसिल तो जीएसटी में जितना भी कुछ आपका लेजिस्लेशन होता है जो भी आपका रिकमेंड करना होता है जीएसटी काउंसिल रिकमेंड करती है एंड देन इट इज ब्रॉड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ रूल्स इन द फॉर्म ऑफ लेजिस्लेटिव अमेंडमेंट्स वो सारी चीजें GST में इंट्रोड्यूस की जाती है सो फ्रॉम फर्स्ट जुलाई टू थाउजेंड सेवेंटीन द जर्नी ऑफ जी एस टी बिगेन एंड ऑन एट जुलाई जे एन के ऑल्सो केम विद इन दर्व्यू ऑफ जी एस टी दिस इज द जेनेसिस ऑफ जी एस टी देन वी कम टू नीड फॉर जी एस टी इंडिया जी एस टी की जरूरत क्या थी जैसे कुछ तो हमने अभी कवर किया ही कि जी एस टी जो है उसमें प्री जी एस टी रेजिंग फॉर दैट नाउ वी कम टू प्री जी एस टी रेजिंग हमें समझना पड़ेगा प्री जी एस टी रेजिंग में ऐसी क्या प्रॉब्लम थी जिसकी वजह से जी एस टी को हमें लाना पड़ा वॉट वर दी प्रॉब्लम इन प्री जी एस टी एरा that we have to bring gst in india because unless and until we have a problem in something we don't go for a new thing or we are very resistant to change so kuch to aise problems thi which india was facing which the country was facing that we have to go for gst 
So what were these? First of all, double taxation. Actually, in the pre-GST regime, there were certain transactions on which both the uh, service tax as well as VAT was being levied. That means the um, there was not there was no clear distinction between certain transactions as they are goods or they are services. Which transactions may samajhi nahi aata tha ki goods hai ya services hai. To dono samajh ke tax laga dete the. Ispe service tax bhi laga do, ispe VAT bhi laga do. To same transaction ke upar dono taxes lag rahe hain. Kitni cost bad jati hai. Fir the uh, non inclusion of several local levies. Non inclusion of several local levies in state VAT, such as luxury tax, entertainment tax, etc. Bohot sari local levies. As I have told you, there are taxes in GST. Mein subsume gaye so, there were so many uh, indirect taxes, or there were local indirect taxes, which were not being subsumed in VAT. VAT, mein aisa nahi tha. VAT was, uh, apart from VAT, there were a number of taxes which were being levied. So, if you have to carry out your, uh, you know, uh, business in a particular state, you have a lot of taxes, you know, multiple taxes which a person has to pay, which is not there under GST. GST, mein everything has come under one umbrella and you have to pay only one tax, that is GST. So, so, and there were multiple VAT laws also. In each state has their own VAT, their own definitions, their own due dates, payment dates, for returns also different dates were there, turnover limit alag thi, exemptions were different. So, Every, so, if a person is carrying on business in five different states or if a person is carrying business pan-India, then it used to be very complex taxation structure. They have to maintain separate records for each of these states. Separate way of maintaining records was there. Due dates were different for payment, for return filing. Then the exemptions were also different. So, so many things have to be taken into consideration while setting up a business in a particular state. So, this problem was there in a pre-GST pre regime. Because in VAT laws, mein sari, har state ka apna VAT law tha, alag ke provisions se, uniform provisions nahi the, which is not there in GST. GST mein uniform provisions hai. Every state has their own state GST law, but the provisions are identical. Sirf alag alag sub usko implement karte hai, but uniform definitions hai, uniform procedures hai, uniform rates hai. Everything is uniform under GST law. So, that was not there. Then cascading of taxes were there. How cascading of taxes were there is the tax which was paid till the uh, manufacturing state. No SINVAT after manufacturing state. Jo manufacturing state, tak, whatever tax which we are paying, that was not, the credit of that tax was not available after that. Let us see an example for that. Under the earlier tax regime, if goods were manufactured for rupees 1000 and excise duty of 125 was levied for it, then when we are paying VAT on the same transaction, then that excise duty credit was not available. Excise duty is the cost ka part. Ban jati thi. So, excise duty will form part of your cost and then on the total cost of 1,125, when your excise duty is the cost ka part, ban gai, excise duty is included in the cost, then we used to implement or we used to compute VAT. So, see the VAT amount has gone so high and there is no credit of the excise duty. Whereas, in, under GST, the tax which is paid at each of these stages is available on the next stage as the input tax credit. Okay. So, this is how we are showing that. And in fact, here we are only showing excise duty. There could be service tax also. If any services are being used for producing that particular product, then that service tax amount will also be part of the cost while computing VAT. So, this is the cascading of tax on account of levy of non vatable In fact, CST was also non vatable if CST is being levied on any particular uh, transaction, then while computing VAT, we have to take CST also in cost, we have to take service tax also in cost, and we have to take, we had to take in fact, we had to take excise duty also in cost. So, when you VAT ke liye apni value, you have to include excise duty, bhi include kar dete the, service tax, bhi, and your CST, any central sales tax ka amount. Bhi. Because in Tino ka hi credit, VAT se nahi milta tha. The excise duty, service tax, and VAT Oh, sorry, excise duty, service tax and central sales tax were not vatable against the VAT amount. So, credit was not available while paying VAT. So, all these used to become part of the cost and cost used to become very high. So, this was the reason and there was non-integration of VAT and service tax because uh, the non-integration means on similar product, there were two types of taxes. For example, software. Software used to be considered as sale of goods also as well as provision of services also. There was no clear demarcation how whether it will be it will, it will be treated as goods or it will be treated as services. So that is why we used to 
have tax both the type of taxes on software which is not there under gst it has been clearly classified as a service under gst we'll read this we'll study this when we'll be going through supply chapter but right now you should know that both the type of taxes service tax as well as vat were being levied on the software so how gst cured all these uh, problems of the earlier tax regime pre gst era or in earlier in erstwhile indirect tax regime here we have used existing indirect tax regime because the indirect tax regime which was existing before coming of gst so there uh, so many uh, problems were there we have gone through those problems now gst resolved those problems how it resolved those problems it integrated all the taxes so there are uniform tax laws uniform procedures uniform tax rates then there is it has removed the cascading of senvat and service tax also and there is a continuous chain of supply we have seen all these things in our discussion which we have just done that there is a continuous chain of credit from the production stage up to the stage of the distribution up to the stage of the consumers consumption uh, credit is available at each stage so there is a continuous chain of tax credits and therefore there is no tax cascading under gst so this is how gst helped in curing the ills or curing the problems of the pre gst era okay now this was that is why the gst was needed or the implementation of gst was needed now let us go through the legislative framework of gst because we are running short of time so uh, in case you have any queries uh, i will be taking it at the end to the extent it is possible i am taking it side by side also but i will try to cover the queries at the end if time permits legislative framework now what is the framework of gst because many students were asking what is igst what is cgst sgst all these terms those who are not aware we'll just go through them and we'll cover them in detail gst is liable on two types of transactions interstate supply or intra state supply generally speaking broadly speaking what is an intra state supply an inter state supply we'll first of all understand okay inter state supply inter state supply is where the location of supplier and place of supply are in two different states or two different union territories or a state and a union territory that means the what is the location of supplier location of supplier is where the supplier is actually located and place of supply is that means where the uh, supply is being consumed so if these two uh, things are at the diff two different states supplier is at one place and supply is being consumed in some other state or in two different union territories in one union territory supplier is there place of supply is in another union territory or supplier is in a state and supply place of supply is in a union territory so that means two different places are there then it will be an inter state supply now how do we determine place of supply we have a dedicated chapter for that so we will learn how to determine place of supply in that chapter in fact for location of supplier also we have specified definitions which helps us in determining that so we will do that in uh, we'll learn that in place of supply chapter but for the time being this is a general broad understanding this is a general understanding because for interstate supply also we have a very detailed definition but just to have a broad understanding what is an interstate supply when the transaction is taking place where supplier is in one state and place of supply is in different state then it is an interstate supply let us take a very simple example the supplier is in bihar a person is selling goods from bihar to a person who is located in delhi and he is selling goods to him so this is an interstate transaction supplier or factory of supplier is in bihar and he is selling goods to a buyer who is located in delhi so this is an interstate transaction what is an intra state transaction intrastate transaction is where the supplier is located in the same state in which the supply is is being consumed that means the supplier and place of supply is in one state or one union territory example would be a person he is supplying goods from bihar to a person in bihar only or in uh, suppose a person is supplying goods from uh, ladakh in uh, the supplier is also in ladakh and the buyer is also in ladakh so in that case it will become an intra state supply that that means location of supply and place of supply should be in one state so we got to know a broad idea what is an interstate what is an intra state detail we will be doing in place of supply chapter 
I'm again telling you that this will be dealt with in detail in place of supply chapter. But just to have an understanding of what is the GST legislative framework is, we had a, a broad idea. So intrastate, on intrastate supply, we have the CGST is levied or CGST and SGST in case the transaction is taking place in a union territory with state legislature or state government. That means if a particular transaction is taking place within a single state or a single union territory with legislature, which are the union territories with legislature? They are Delhi, Puducherry, and Jammu and Kashmir. These are the three state, these are the three union territories which have their own legislature. You know, Delhi is not a complete state. It is uh, it is a union territory with state legislature. Same way as this Puducherry and Re Lately, Jammu and Kashmir has also been made a union territory with state legislature. Okay. So, the CGST plus SGST will be levied if the transaction is taking place within a single state or a single union territory with legislature. So, union territory with legislature is CG SGST is being levied. Remember this. Okay. But, <coughs> sorry, but a UTGST. If a transaction is taking place in a UT, union territory, which is without legislature, for example, Ladakh, Chandigarh, then Daman and Diu, Dadar and Nagar Haveli, Lakshuri. So these are union territories without le legislature. So if these union territories without legislature are there and a transaction is taking place in these union territories, then that means no two union, only one union territory is there, which is being involved. Then we will be levying CGST plus UTGST. Then SGST will not be levied. So CGST plus SGST in case the transaction is taking place in a single state or in a single union territory with legislature. CGST plus UTGST will be levied if a transaction is taking place in a union territory without legislature. Single union territory without legislature. Then we come to the interstate supply. Interstate supply, IGST is being levied. So IGST, only one tax IGST will be levied. But you know IGST is actually the sum of CGST plus SGST only. So if we combine CGST and SGST together, we make an IGST. So rate of IGST is exactly double of CGST and SGST or CGST plus UTGST. So rate of CGST and SGST is always same or rate of CGST and UTGST is same. And if we combine them together, we get a rate of IGST. Hope this is clear to you. Please uh, uh, provide me in chat box that you are getting what I am telling you. And I am not very fast in uh, explaining. Please let me know. Now, what are the legislations which are being uh, governing these particular taxes? When we talk about CGST. So, CGST is levied by the central government. It is a central tax. And there is only one legislation which is there. That is uh, CGST Act. Okay. So CGST is being levied by the CGST Act and CGST Act is formulated by the central government. CGST is levied by the central government under one legislation, CGST Act. SGST, I told you, every state has their own separate legislation. Okay, and it is levied by the state government or UT, UTs, that means union territories without legislature. Then we come to third type of tax that is UTGST. UTGST is... Union territory without legislature. So, union territory without legislature is there, then UTGST will be levied. They will be levied by these union territories only. There will be one UTGST Act, which will be governing all UTs without legislature. Hmm. Then comes the IGST. IGST is also a central tax. It is levied by the central government and it is levied under or it is governed by IGST Act. Okay. IGST means uh, integrated uh, integrated goods and services tax or it is sometimes called integrated tax also. This is levied on the interstate supply. So it is actually a combination of CGST plus SGST. Hope, hope Nanshi, this is clear to you. And uh, in I, IGST, who receives the amount of IGST? We have a separate uh, example illustration for explaining this. So I will be explaining you afterwards because otherwise this will break our uh, con uh, you know continuity. So this is 
Interstate, interstate, we have got, you all must have understood. And then CGST, SGST, UTGST, IGST, I think everything is clear to you. These legislations are also clear to you. So you, you can see that only SGST has multiple legislations. Otherwise, CGST Act is one, UTGST is one, IGST is one. And for SGST, every state has a different, uh, you know, legislation. So regarding revenue, uh, you know, I will be telling you afterwards which state gets the revenue or how these uh, this taxes are actually, um, uh, you know, they are collected by the government and then they how they are distributed to the states. For this, we have a separate illustration. So please permit me to complete this. I will take your queries regarding this afterwards when we take that example. Okay, interstate, interstate, everything is clear to you. Legislative framework is clear to you. Now, let's quickly go through the other points of the GST framework. Concurrent dual GST model, very important concept. India is a federal state, all of you know. But India has a very unique federalism, do you know? Because federal state say, means that there, are, there is a clear delineation, there is a clear demarcation or distinction or division of the powers between center and state. Center and states. Okay. In India, what is unique is that Though there is a clear distinction between the powers of center and state, but there is a major concentration of power or centralization of power at the center. फिर से एक बार हिंदी में भी समझाती हूँ जो इंडिया में जो फेडरल फेडरलिज्म है वो थोड़ा अलग है फेडरलिज्म का मतलब होता है कि स्टेट और सेंटर के बीच में पावर्स का बंटवारा हो गया है सब अपनी अपनी पावर्स को एक्सरसाइज करेंगे लेकिन इंडिया में ज्यादा जो पावर्स है वो सेंटर को दी गई है सेंटर के पास ज्यादा पावर्स है ये ऐसा है कि स्टेट्स को ज्यादा अटोनमी ना मिल जाए स्टेट्स को हमने फ्रीडम भी दे रखी है अटोनमी भी दे रखी है बट उन्हें बाद में बांधा भी हुआ है सेंटर से तो दे आर देर इज हायर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ पावर देर इज अंट्रलाइजेशन एट द सेंट्रल लेवल सो दिस इज अक फीचर ऑफ इंडियन फेडरलिज्म दिस वे इंडियन फेडरलिज्म इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अदर फेडरल स्टेट्स अब बिकॉज इंडियन फेडरलिज्म इज अ वेरी यूनिक फेडरलिज्म यहाँ पर हम जीएसटी मॉडल विच वी इम्प्लीमेंटेड was a very unique gst model which is called concurrent dual gst model okay now what is concurrent dual gst model concurrent dual gst model ka matlab hai acha we have some queries regarding the previous slides after concurrent dual gst model i will take some of the queries which are uh, pertaining to previous slides so that you are not left with your queries here so concurrent dual gst model means that center and state can simultaneously levy taxes on goods and services that means the, we have some state subjects we have some subjects for this uh, center kuch aise sub, uh, subjects hote hain jispe center state, uh, laws banata hai kuch aise hain jahan pe state laws banata hai is tarah taxation ka bhi hai that there are certain uh, for services earlier we used to have only center can levy tax on services only manuf on manufacture only center can levy taxes and on the intra state sale only state could levy the taxes but under gst both state and center have the simultaneous power to levy taxes on supply of goods and services right from the stage of production up to the stage of distribution yani pure supply chain mein aap har jagah par gst laga sakte hain state bhi laga sakta hai center bhi laga sakta hai sath sath to concurrently डुअल जीएसटी चल रहा है यानी सेंटर में भी लग रहा है स्टेट में भी लग रहा है डुअल जीएसटी मतलब आईजीएसटी सेंटर में भी जीएसटी है स्टेट्स का अलग जीएसटी है और कॉन्क्यूरेंटली है दैट मींस दे आर बोथ लेविंग इट साइमल्टेनियसली दोनों साथ साथ लगा सकते हैं दैट इज कॉन्क्यूरेंट डुअल जीएसटी मॉडल विच इज एक्चुअली अनिक मॉडल विच हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन इंडिया थोड़ा सा क्वेरीज ले लेते बिकॉज सम स्टूडेंट्स आई थिंक दे माइट नॉट लेफ्ट बिहाइंड विद दीज लेजिस्लेचर का मतलब क्या होता है लेजिस्लेचर अगर मैं स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर की बात करती हूँ जो आपकी स्टेट असेंबलीज होती है वी हैव अ पार्लियामेंट एट दी सेंटर लोकसभा एंड राज्यसभा एंड वी हैव अ स्टेट असेंबली एट दी स्टेट लेवल्स सो एवरी स्टेट हैज अ स्टेट असेंबली बट यूनियन टेरिटरीज दे आर गवर्न बाय दी गवर्नर यूनियन टेरिटरीज में नहीं होती है असेंबलीज बट देर आर थ्री स्टेट इन इंडिया विच वी नो पुंडुचेरी देन दिल्ली एंड नाउ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑल्सो दे हैव देर ओन लेजिस्लेचर ऑल्सो दे आर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम रेस्ट ऑफ द यूनियन टेरिटरीज यानी वहां पे देर इज अ Uh, division of powers between governor as well as we have a chief minister also there whereas in other union territories you don't have a chief minister wahan pe chief minister nahi hote uh, union territories they are governed by the governors so these three union territories are unique in this way they are union territories with legislature okay and uh, uh, 
सो यूनियन टेरिटरीज विदाउट लेजिस्लेचर आर जहाँ पे लेजिस्लेचर नहीं है जैसे कि आपका हो गया लद्दाख हो गया लक्षद्वीप देन वी हैव दादर एंड नागर हवेली दमन दू ऑल दीज आर यूनियन टेरिटरीज विदाउट लेजिस्लेचर डायरेक्टली गवर्न बाय दी गवर्नर लेजिस्लेशन का क्या मतलब है लेजिस्लेशन मीन्स द एक्ट और द एक्ट एंड रूल्स विच आर गवर्निंग अ पर्टिकुलर टैक्स मैंने बोला आई जी एस टी इज लेवीड बाई दी लेजिस्लेशन विच इज कॉल्ड आई जी एस टी एक्ट एंड रूल्स सो देर इज अ सेपरेट लेजिस्लेशन लेजिस्लेशन मीन्स दी एक्ट एंड रूल्स विच आर गवर्निंग अ पर्टिकुलर टैक्स कॉन्क्रेंट डूएल जी एस टी मीन्स दैट वी आर कॉन्क्रेंटली कॉन्क्रेंट मीन्स साइमल्टेनियस द वर्ड कॉन्क्रेंट मीन्स साइमल्टेनियस डूएल मीन्स टू सो देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ टैक्सेस इन टू टाइप्स ऑफ लेवीज अंडर जी एस टी वन इज अंडर इंटरेस्ट दिस आई जी एस टी एंड अनदर इज सी जी एस टी एस जी एस टी एंड यू टी जी एस टी कॉन्क्रेंट मीन्स साइमल्टेनियसली दे आर बींग लेवीड बाई सेंटर एज वेल एज बाई दी स्टेट यानी दोनों सेंटर और स्टेट मिलकर जी एस टी लेवी करते हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड दी कॉन्क्रेंट डूअल जी एस टी मॉडल इन इंडिया बोथ सेंटर एंड स्टेट कैन लेवी द जी एस टी ऑन सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज वेर एज इन अदर कंट्रीज इफ यू फाइंड इट्स नॉट सो जहां पर डूअल जी एस टी मॉडल है वहीं पर सेंटर और स्टेट दोनों टैक्स को लेवी कर सकते हैं डूअल जी एस टी मीन्स दोनों इंटीग्रेटेड टैक्स एंड इंटीग्रेटेड टैक्स एंड दिस सेंट्रल टैक्सेज सी जी एस टी एस जी एस टी एंड यू टी जी एस टी आर देर कैस्केडिंग कैस्केडिंग का मतलब मैंने बताया था अभी टैक्स कैस्केडिंग मीन्स टैक्स ऑन टैक्स You are paying tax on tax, but that was there in pre-GST era. In GST, we say that it has been almost, uh, you know, taken care of. Under GST era, we have almost taken care of cascading effect because there is no tax on tax. We are value addition pay, value addition pay tax pay kar rahe. So we are not paying tax on tax. This is in this way we are actually, uh, you know, in, in a way preventing tax on tax or tax cascading. Tax cascading ka matlab hi tax on tax hota hai. Uh, what is the meaning of HS? And somebody is asking all these queries. I will take later on. Union territory, uh, if tax applicable on union territory, state of Indiana is asking. Union territory me tax konsa lagega? CGST plus UTGST because it's a union. I am assuming it's a union territory without legislature. Normally, normal union territory. So, वहाँ पे UTGST लगेगा plus CGST लगेगा जो transaction होगी. Um. सेस का मतलब क्या होता है वो भी अभी हम पढ़ेंगे सी एस जी एस टी कॉम्पनसेशन सेस क्या होता है इफ एनी सेलर नॉट टेक जी एस टी नंबर यू विल नॉट बी लाइबल टू पे यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू पे जी एस टी वो सब हम बाद में पढ़ेंगे क्या कॉन्सिक्वेंसेज होंगे पेनल्टीज प्रोसिक्यूशन बहुत कुछ होता है इज लाइबल टू टेक जी एस टी रजिस्ट्रेशन ही हैज टू टेक वील डू इट सेपरेटली ठीक है अच्छा अभी आई थिंक ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द क्वेरीज फॉर द टाइमिंग हैव बीन डन कॉन्क्रेन डूअल जी एस टी मॉडल इज आई थिंक क्लियर टू यू नाउ इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट देन यू कैन Is GST a concurrent law? No, GST is not a concurrent law. GST, it's a model. Actually, type there are different types of GST models which are being introduced across the world. One such type is dual GST model. And you can say concurrent dual GST model, which is being introduced in India because uh, here both center and states are simultaneously levying the taxes. That is why it is called concurrent dual GST. Both center and state are levying the taxes. that is it is that is why it is a dual tax and it is usually dual gst model is usually introduced in a federal state because there we have center also and state also both have powers okay now we come to classification and the gst classification is again very important why because we have to ascertain the rate of a which is applicable on a particular good or a particular service to determine that rate the classification is of utmost importance okay now under gst we have a complete tariff Tariff. What is tariff? Tariff is a complete schedule, a list of goods and services, and against that, each goods or each service a rate is prescribed. So we we have to go to that particular tariff. This we call it. You can use it in simple language. We rate schedule also can say. You have to go to that particular schedule, and you have to see where your particular good is being classified, where your particular service is being classified. Then you have to see the rate against it, and you have to pay that particular tax rate of tax on that supply. we will be discussing in detail uh, after in charge of uh, gst chapter this is just an overview similarly for composition scheme composition scheme somebody was asking about it but composition scheme maybe i will just explain you at this point of time only this that it is a scheme for small taxpayers small manufacturers small service providers or small traders there is a scheme called composition scheme jahan pe jisko itna sab kuch nahi samajhna those who don't want to go into such uh, detailed system or such higher rate maybe their comparatively higher rate of taxes 
लेकिन गो फॉर लोअर रेट ऑफ टैक्सेस सिंपल टैक्स टैक्स रिटर्न देन सिंपल यू नो पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्सेस इज ऑल्सो वेरी कैन बी सिंपली डिटर्मेंट दे कैन बी डिटर्मेंट इन अ वेरी सिंपल मैनर सो दे कैन गो फॉर दी कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम कॉम्पोजिशन स्कीम भी वील गोइंग इन वील बी डूइंग इन चार्ज ऑफ जी एस टी रजिस्ट्रेशन रजिस्ट्रेशन का है कि रजिस्ट्रेशन इज दैट एवरी पर्सन हु इज मेकिंग अ टैक्सेबल सप्लाई फ्रॉम अ पर्टिकुलर स्टेट हैज टू टेक रजिस्ट्रेशन जी एस टी में अगर आपको सप्लाई करना है तो यू हैव टू टेक रजिस्ट्रेशन बट देर इज अ थ्रेश होल्ड लिमिट विच इज प्रोवाइडेड टू ईच एंड एवरी सप्लायर इट इज डिफरेंट फॉर गुड्स सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स इट इज डिफरेंट फॉर सप्लायर ऑफ सर्विसेज एंड इट इज डिफरेंट फॉर सप्लायर ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज बोथ समबडी यूज सप्लाइंग बोथ गुड्स एंड सर्विसेज इट इज डिफरेंट very good uh, pratesh it is very important for taking itc registration is important for taking itc so registration lena zaruri hai agar aapko itc chahiye lekin aapko jab aap us threshold limit ko exceed karoge tabhi aap registration loge aur tabhi aap itc le bhi paoge itc matlab input tax credit but wo sab hum aage we'll be doing it in subsequent chapters so no need to go in detail at this point of time you should know that yes we have to take registration under gst when we are making taxable supplies there is a threshold limit there is a threshold limit of exemption that means is limit agar aapka turnover is particular uh, limit tak hai to you need not take registration but after crossing that particular threshold limit you have to take registration this is the simple provision in certain cases it has been prescribed that you have to take compulsory registration even if you are making 1 rupee of supply wo kuch specified cases hai jahan pe bataya gaya hai ki aapko registration lena hi padega chahe aapka uh, फ्रेशो आपने मतलब पहले रुपए से जो आप सप्लाई कर रहे हैं वहीं पे आपको पहले रजिस्ट्रेशन लेना ही पड़ेगा देर आर सर्टेन स्पेसिफाइड केसेस बट जनरली यू गेट अ थ्रेश होल्ड लिमिट देन वी हैव सम एग्जाम्शन ऑल्सो अंडर जीएसटी फॉर गुड्स एज वेल एज फॉर सर्विसेज सीमलेस फ्लो ऑफ क्रेडिट वील ट्राई टू कवर इट बाई वे ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल इफ वी विल इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू कवर इट टूडे आई विल टेक इट इन नेक्स्ट क्लास बी रेस्ट एश्योर जो अभी सम स्टूडेंट्स वर आस्किंग की हाउ दी क्रेडिट इज Uh, how the itc or the how the tax is apportioned revenue tax revenue is apportioned to different states which state will take it exporting state or importing state so that all mechanism we'll be explaining in seamless flow of credit example or seamless flow of credit illustration there are two illustrations in the uh, study material which are given i will be discussing them because they will help you in understanding this concept very clearly that how this credit flows from each state to another state now we come to gst common portal now what is gst common portal uh, gst common portal is a portal which has been provided by the uh, gst network and it has for all registration in payment of tax returns everything we have to go to this portal if any demand comes for your uh, particular product or your uh, company then you have to reply to that demand on that particular portal for filing any appeal any interface with the department has to be done on the gst portal so gst common portal is very important i will give you a look of gst common portal just to give you an idea how it looks like just a minute so gst portal is an interface between the taxpayer as well as the and the department so if you have to go for registration you have to go to the uh, gst portal and uh, i hope the uh, this is visible to everyone yes this is the gst portal if you see the services provided by it then you will see registration payments refunds in fact for refunds also you have to go here all the services which are being provided by the gst port uh, which are required by a taxpayer most of these services are available at this particular gst common portal just to give you an idea what all services we can take from a gst what for which we can we should go to the gst portal are filing returns for input tax credit then uh, for registering with gst then making any payments or for filing an appeal for replying to a demand and uh, for any replying to any show cause notice which has been there and there are two more portals which are important from which are in fact gst common portal has to be it is provided in the law that the gst council has to recommend or has to notify a portal for the 
where the uh, taxpayer has to go for all his services. For e-way bill, you know what is e-way bill? E-way bill is actually, uh, e-way bill is a document which has to be accompanied for with the movement of goods from one place to another if the value of goods exceeds 50,000 rupees. So if you are taking value of, if you are supplying goods for more than 50,000 rupees and uh, you are transferring these or you are taking those goods to the buyer, general, this is on sim simpler manner we can understand that if you are taking it to the buyer, then you have to accompany your goods with that e-waybill document which contains all the details of those goods. So that at the checkpoint or wherever anybody, any department person, he wants to know about what all you are carrying, whether it, GST has been charged on it, what rate has been charged, all these details are there in that document that is called e -Wibble. Now, for e we have a separate dedicated portal and that is e gst.gov.in. So, for rest of the things, we have gst.gov.in, which is the GST common portal. And for e we have a separate portal, which is e gst dot gov dot in it is taking some time to open and another we have is invoice portal this is called in uh, for e invoicing you must have heard um, at some news portal or somewhere that gst is uh, the invoices under gst are now get nowadays getting e invoices for certain um, type of taxpayers or certain types of businesses whose turnover is more than 5 crores till in, uh, from 2017-18 till now if their turnover has ever exceeded 5 crores rupees then they have to generate the invoices electronically generating ele elect invoices electronically means they have to put all the data of their invoices in this particular system and then they have to they will get the uh, QR code based invoices. So this is the portal for e-invoicing. So these are three separate portals which are there. This is e bill system. For e bill system, for generating e bill, we have to go to this portal. And the rest for rest of the things which I told you, registration, then payment, returns, everything, we have to go to gst.gov.in. This is the homepage of GST. This is the GST common portal. Okay. So, this is what GST common portal is all about. We learn about it during the course of uh, the discussions in other classes. Now we come to GST compensation says. Now what is GST compensation says? GST compensation says is a says which is imposed for paying compensation to the states. Now why this tax was levied? Actually, uh, when GST was being proposed, the states were not ready to, were not agreeing to implementing GST. Why it was so? Because they were imposing VAT, they were collecting CST, and they were getting huge revenue from that. So, the states had this apprehension that if we implement GST, where everything will be uniform and everything will be integrated, so state, central will also levy tax on their intrastate sales and interstate sales, they will collect tax on that, so they will lose revenue. And because of this apprehension, they were not agreeing to GST. So in order to bring everybody at the same platform and in order to make everyone agree to GST, uh, to launch of GST, this the states were promised that they will be given compensation for first five years of the loss of their revenue, which they are the loss of revenue which they are going to face. And for this, the center imposed a cess called GST compensation cess. Now this is a cess which has been imposed with the specific objective of uh, paying compensation to the state. It is levied on luxury and demerit goods. For example, pan masala, luxury cars, uh, air conditioners, this compensation says is imposed. It is imposed on both inter and intrastate supply. And it was initially it was to be imposed till 31st. Uh, it was to be imposed till 30, 30th June 2022. For first five years, it had to be imposed. But since states could not get their entire compensation which was due to them, so it was this cess was further extended till 31st March 2026. Now, most important point here is that this GST compensation says is only this much information is required by you that what it is, where it is levied, but it will not 
be considered. It is not to be considered while um, solving the questions. Question solve करते वक्त GST compensation says को नहीं लगाना. This is most important part. All of you should know. We have not. Uh, this is uh, you have to ignore this in all the questions. In fact, when you see your revision test paper also, you will find this. Uh, this um, instruction at the beginning of the uh, this uh, revision test paper itself that gst compensation says has been ignored in all the questions so we for ease of the students we have exempted them from uh, applying gst compensation says provisions in the questions exam may be aapko gst compensation says ko question compute karte hue nahi dekhna hai so this is what gst compensation says is and most important that you do not have to apply it in your questions Now we come to uh, the next is within GST and outside GST. Now these are certain products which are the general common products where either we are imposing both GST and excise duty and sales tax or none of them or both of them. So let's have a look at them. First is alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Now alcoholic liquor for human consumption is outside the purview of GST. It is not at all within the purview of GST. In fact, the definition constitution में goods की दी हुई है, the goods and services tax की. उसमें it does specifically mention that goods and services tax is a tax on goods and services except alcoholic liquor for human consumption. So from the constitution itself, it has been excluded कि alcoholic liquor for human consumption पर GST नहीं लगेगा. Just a minute. Uh, actually, before I proceed, uh, some student is uh, again and again asking that if dual concurrent dual GST model means CGST six percent and SGST six percent. Concurrent dual GST model does not mean that CGST and SGST rate will be same. It means that both center and state will levy. So both center and state, if they are levying taxes, that can be in the form of IGST also, where there is one tax which is at the at one rate, which is being levied at one rate. So concurrent. means both center and state are simultaneously levying taxes dual means uh, both center and state are levying so this is concurrent dual gst model and please don't get confused in e way bill or e invoicing right now because it is a topic which has to be separately discussed in detail so please don't get into the details of uh, this e way bill or in e invoicing we have to right now focus on the basic concepts of gst so alcoholic liquor for human consumption is outside the purview of gst That means no GST will be levied on it. So earlier on alcoholic liquor for human consumption in pre-GST era, the state excise duty used to be levied. So in post-GST era also, state excise duty will be levied. And on inter and intra-state transaction, central sales tax and VAT will be levied as it used to be levied before GST. So alcoholic liquor के लिए after GST there is no change in the position. जैसे पहले state excise duty और CST और VAT लग रहा था. वैसे ही अब भी लगेगा इसमें कोई चेंज नहीं फिर पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स पेट्रोलियम क्रूड और डीजल पेट्रोलियम क्रूड डीजल पेट्रोल एटीएफ एंड नेचुरल गैस तो पेट्रोलियम एंड पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स दे आर प्रेजेंटली नॉट अंडर दी परव्यू ऑफ जीएसटी दे विल बी दे विल बी दे आर इनफैक्ट दे आर विद इन द परव्यू ऑफ जीएसटी बट जीएसटी हैज नॉट येट बीन लेवीड ऑन देम इट हैज टू बी लेवीड फ्रॉम अ डेट टू बी नोटिफाइड सो दिस इज देयर इन द जीएसटी लॉ इटसेल्फ इट हैज बीन प्रोवाइडेड that gst on these particular products will be levied from a date to be notified this date has not yet been notified kisi ek date se lagega wo abhi notify nahi hui hai so presently no gst to abhi kya lagta hai abhi central excise duty lagti hai cst lagta hai aur vat lagta hai theek hai then we come to tobacco tobacco is within the purview of gst lekin tobacco ek sin good hai it is a demerit good तो उस पर सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी भी लगती है बिकॉज सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी वन रीजन इज दैट इट यूज टू जनरेट लॉट ऑफ सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी रेवेन्यू इन सेकेंड बिकॉज इट इज अन गुड इट इज अ डी मैरिड गुड सो जीएसटी प्लस सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी बोथ आर बींग लेवीड सेम इज ट्रू फ्रॉम फॉर ओपीएम इंडियन हेम एंड अदर नार्कोटिक ड्रग्स एंड नार्कोटिक्स दैट दे आर सब्जेक्ट टू जीएसटी एज वेल एज स्टेट एक्साइज ड्यूटी जो सप्लाई होगा उसके ऊपर जीएसटी तो लगेगा ही लगेगा सप्लाई चाहे आप उसको सेल कर रहे हैं जो भी मैन्युफैक्चर कर रहे हैं इट विल बी सब्जेक्ट टू जीएसटी प्लस इन केस ऑफ टोबैको सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी विल बी लेवीड एंड इन केस ऑफ इंडियन ओपीएम इंडियन हेम्प एक्सेट्रा स्टेट एक्साइज ड्यूटी विल बी लेवीड सो दीज आर दिस इज द जनरल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ जीएसटी और लेवेबिलिटी ऑफ अदर टैक्सेज ऑन सर्टिन कॉमन गुड्स 
why was the constitution amendment required this will be doing subsequently in this session itself so don't worry under dual gst model rate for both cgst and sgst can they be different no they will always be same gst cgst and sgst rate will always be same cgst and utgst rate will always be same and together they will form igst that means cgst plus sgst will be equal to igst now let us see which all taxes have been subsumed in gst the central excise the central taxes which are being subsumed are given here that mainly it is central excise duty service tax then it is central sales tax and cvd special cvd centrals all types of surcharges cesses you know there are so many cesses there were so many cesses which were being levied under indirect tax regime before gst all them have been subsumed into gst again state taxes whatever taxes you could think of they have been most of them have been put into gst basket all state surcharges cesses then entertainment tax only the entertainment tax which is levied by the local authorities that is not subsumed but otherwise this entertainment tax has been subsumed in gst taxes on lottery betting and gambling now we have separate tax under gst itself for uh, tax on lottery betting and gambling gst is levable entry tax purchase tax octroi then tax on advertisement all these have been subsumed in gst so what is not subsumed in gst in fact that becomes more important to know that what is more that what is subsumed in gst one student is asking to um, this previous slide to be explained in hindi quickly i am explaining it in hindi alko humne is slide mein ye dekha ki kis cheez par gst lagega aur kis cheez par gst nahi lagega kuch popular items ke upar hum dekh rahe hain alcoholic liquor for human consumption jo hai usko humne gst ke purview se bahar rakha hai kaise constitution mein jo gst ki definition hai usi mein likha hai ki gst alcoholic liquor for human consumption pe nahi lagega तो उस पर तो जीएसटी नहीं लगेगा अब जीएसटी नहीं लगेगा तो क्या लगेगा जो पहले लग रहा था जीएसटी से पहले वो था स्टेट एक्साइज ड्यूटी और सेंट्रल स्टेल टैक्स और वैट तो वही लगता रहेगा अगर मैन्युफैक्चर हो रहा है तो सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी स्टेट एक्साइज ड्यूटी लगेगी और अगर आप उसको सेल कर रहे हो तो इंट्रा स्टेट सेल में वैट और इंटर स्टेट सेल में सीएसटी लगेगा पेट्रोलियम पे जीएसटी के परव्यू में है पेट्रोलियम पेट्रोलियम को ये नहीं कहा गया कि कभी जीएसटी नहीं लगेगा लेकिन अभी आज की डेट में इस पर पेट्रोलियम पर जीएसटी नहीं लग रहा है उसको अभी जीएसटी के उस पर जीएसटी ले भी नहीं किया गया है लेकिन अभी उस पर इसीलिए पहले की तरह सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी लग रही है सीएसटी लग रहा है और वैट लग रहा है टबैको और ओपीएम इंडियन हेम ये सारे नार्कोटिक प्रोडक्ट्स जो हैं ये जीएसटी के परव्यू में आ चुके हैं इन पे जीएसटी लगता है लेकिन साथ साथ क्योंकि ये सिन गुड्स है इसलिए इनके ऊपर सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी और स्टेट एक्साइज ड्यूटी भी लग जाता है कुछ बच्चों को सीजीएसटी एस और आई के कुछ इलेस्ट्रेशन चाहिए वील डू दैट डोंट वरी let me complete what i have planned for this session then we will do all these things in the next session don't worry you will get to know everything don't worry subsumed ka kya matlab subsumed ka matlab usko usme mila diya gaya hai that means it has been uh, when i say these taxes have been subsumed in gst that means these taxes have been replaced by gst now these taxes are no more there when i uh, this list which we are seeing the taxes all these taxes which are given on the screen they have been replaced now by gst these taxes no more exist they are no more in existence ye uh, they are uh, certain taxes like central sales tax vat we have seen that on few products they are being levied but primarily they have been replaced by gst primarily in spite in place of them gst is being levied okay this is the meaning of subsumed central taxes pranka please repeat your query because uh, i am not able to see your query please repeat your query uh ab kaun se taxes which are the taxes which are not subsumed in gst these are in central taxes the major taxes which are there is basic custom duty export duty and all other types of custom duties in state taxes which are not subsumed are road and uh, passenger tax toll tax property tax stamp duty electric electricity tax then professional tax mandi tax these are some of the major taxes central and state which are not subsumed which are not replaced by gst now we come to the now we come to the benefits of gst now uh, what are the benefits of gst in day to day life now creation of the unique unified national market just for you
Priyanka is asking who pays tax and who gets ITC buyer or seller. Okay. Tax is paid by the seller who is supplying the goods and ITC is taken by the buyer. But at with this point of time, this is the only uh, basic understanding which you require that a person who is actually supplying the goods has the liability to deposit the tax. That means the government will get the tax from the supplier or government will take the tax from the supplier, though it is actually taken from the pocket of the buyer only. This is how the this tax structure is all about. That ultimate burden of the tax is to be borne by the buyer. and But it will be deposited by the seller. When I say who pays tax, it is the person who is depositing the tax with the government. And it is supplier. But who is actually bearing the burden is buyer. Then we come to ITC. Who is taking ITC? ITC is being taken by the buyer. Because I am buying goods. I have to take ITC on my invert supplies. So being a buyer, I have to take ITC on my invert supplies while pay paying tax on my outward supplies. Hope that answers your query. Now we come to benefits of GST. GST, as we have seen, that it is a very um, beneficial tax. It does not have tax cascading. It reduces cost. All these uh, benefits have been just summarized in these slides. That what are the benefits of GST? Creation of a unified national market. Now, since in, under GST, we have already told you that there are common procedures, there are common laws which are there. So it creates a common uniform market and it, it creates an integrated economy at the national level because uh, under GST law, all the procedures, all the laws, all the rates, everything is uniform. One uh, similar definition, similar procedures are there under GST law. So it helps in creating a unified national market and it gives a boost to Make in India initiative. How? Because when the products are being, when locally produced goods are, goods are being produced locally and they are getting the credit of each uh, of the ITC paid at the earlier stage, at each stage of the supply chain, then this way they are going to get the, uh, they are going to uh, reduce the prices of their goods. This is the ultimate aim of GST also that the benefit of ITC should be, uh, should be passed on to the final buyer. How will it be passed on? The price has to be reduced. Now, when price will be reduced, the goods will become competitive and they will become competitive internationally also because one way is that the prices are being reduced uh, of the goods which are being produced in India plus the, inter the goods which somebody is importing also. Generally, imported goods are cheaper, but here in, on imported goods, we will be uh, imposing almost similar amount of IGST. This we will do later on, but IGST is being levied. So, this makes the goods... Uh, compa uh, comparatively competitive in the international market also. So it gives an, a boost to make in India initiative. That means who are producing it locally, they get a boost that yes, they are also being uh, on a level playing field with the importers. And it uh, in, in a way give boost to investment and employment also because when your uh, goods are being accepted internationally, then your uh, it will give a boost, your products will become competitive in the international market and this will give a boost to the investment in, and the employment. It will in, in turn generate employment. What is HSN? HSN is Harmonized System of Nomenclature. It is the system which we are following for classification of goods. It is the system which we are following for uh, classification of goods. Not, I'm telling you, this HSN pertains to classification provision and I have already apprised that this classification will be, be discussing in the charge of GST chapter. So I hope this answers your query Radha that what is HSN? GST is transparent to everyone. Yes, GST is transparent to everyone. It was there. If it is there in invoice, everyone knows about it. So... This can also be a point. Simplified tax structure. Now, how it is a simplified tax structure? We have already seen that everything is uniform across India. Same type of SDST legislations are there. So, the person uh, who is doing the business has a very ease. Because under earlier under VAT, we used to have multiple legislations. Then a person who is operating in a state has to remember all the due dates, different, different due dates for payment of tax, returns. Then he has to remember what all exemptions are available in that particular state. Then uh, what uh, what is the threshold limit, how he has, every state has a different way of operating. But now across India, uniform legislations are there, uniform rules, uh, procedures, acts are there. So it in a way grants an ease of doing the business to all the businesses. And this in turn leads to certainty in tax administration because we know that yes, this is the law, this has to be 
implemented and this this is what we are following so tax administration also has an ease in implementing their um, you know in assessing the people so this is it brings a certainty in tax administration rani please repeat your question because i am not able to see your question now and please repeat your entire query uh, in one line so this is simplified tax structure then uh, the next is easy tax compliance now as i already told you we have gst common portal gstn and then for e bill we have a separate dedicated portal for i for e invoicing we have a dedicated portal so because of these it interface the tax compliance becomes very easy and automated because everything you have to do on portal everything is there online so it brings transparency also easier tax compliance is there because we have uniform procedures so we do not have to maintain multiple records we do not have to uh, you know follow different rates for different goods across india every state has a different rate every state has a different due date as i already told so here everything is uniform everything is has been integrated into one tax so it becomes easier to follow it with the automated procedures and as well as we have compliance also becomes very easy this is actually uh, the benefit to industry so it uh, brings lots of benefits to the industry because now as i already told it there is an easy uh, compliance tax compliance then consumption this reduces reduces the prices because when uh, you have itc at each of the levels your prices will reduce your consumption will increase if your consumption increases then you are definitely going to produce more your production will increase and your industry will be benefited ill effects of tax ill effects of tax cascading are totally mitigated by gst this i have explained time and again and i think now by now you are clear because it is a value added tax it is a tax on value addition so the there are very minimal uh, ill effects of tax cascading which are left under gst because almost everything there for almost everything we are getting a credit and there are special benefits for small traders and entrepreneurs like composition scheme is there for traders for manufacturers for small service providers then we come to the constitutional provisions i am planning to complete the constitutional provisions today not not entire constitutional provisions only constitution 101st amendment act remaining constitutional provisions we will discuss in the next class so please allow me to complete it and in case you have any query please post it here so that i can answer it at the end so constitutional provisions see any law any tax which has to be and stretching your class by another 15 minutes so that these provisions can get these topics can get completed hope all of you are comfortable with uh, uh, extending the class by 15 minutes and in case anybody has issue please let me know constitutional provisions uh, means that any law any tax which has to be imposed or which has to be collected it has to be it has to emerge from the constitution of india okay so that means if center has to levy a tax or state has to levy a tax the power to levy that tax should be mentioned in the constitution it should be explicitly there in the constitution so if you are levying income tax on the uh, tax on the income of the individuals or companies or partnerships or businesses then the power for that should come so a uh, power for that should come from the constitution thanks students for allowing me to extend the class so that means the first of all we should see if we are seeing any tax then we have to see whether we have power for this in the constitution or not that means we cannot levy any tax randomly or arbitrarily no we have to see whether the power to levy that tax is granted or given by the constitution or not to levy that tax and to collect that tax okay for this we have to go to the Seventh schedule of Article two forty six. Article two forty six specifies that uh, the which all subjects are under the purview of center or state or both. It has three lists in it, and there is a schedule annexed to it that is seventh schedule to Article two forty six, and uh, the this schedule has three lists. List one, which is a union list. List one union list. It has the matters on which. parliament or central government has the exclusive right to make the laws that means the whatever subjects are written for example the custom duty is there in union list only so whatever law has to be made for regarding custom duty it has to be made by the center or union 
स्टेट लिस्ट हैज दी मैटर्स ऑन विच ओनली स्टेट गवर्नमेंट विल मेक दी लॉज दैट इज लिस्ट नंबर टू सो वट एवर सब्जेक्ट सब्जेक्ट मैटर्स आर मैं इन लिस्ट टू ऑन दैट ओनली स्टेट विल मेक दी लॉज सो वी हैव टू सी वेदर आर सब वेदर आर पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट फॉल्स इन यूनियन लिस्ट और स्टेट लिस्ट दैट पर्टिकुलर सेंटर और स्टेट विल हैव दी पावर टू मेक दी लॉज ऑन दैट सब्जेक्ट third is the concurrent list as the name suggest I, i i already told you concurrent means simultaneous so both center and state can make laws on the subjects which are mentioned in the concurrent list they both have powers to make laws on these subjects now this is how the, the because of this segregation of the powers which we saw earlier that there are separate subjects union list has subjects for which only center can make uh, laws state has different list then there is a concurrent concurrent list on which both can make the laws now regarding these earlier what was there the central laws like excise duty service tax only center had the power to make the laws on the intra state sale only state had the power to make the laws intra state sale csp center could levy tax and state could collect that tax so center had the power to make laws regarding central sales tax there was segregation of the powers between center and state for the services and goods but under gst we had to bring everything into one net everything has to be integrated we had a very different framework where every, uh, every uh, you know every item every supply can be taxed either by state or by state or both so for that we had a separate framework or a new framework because we had to integrate all the taxes which were being subsumed in gst and we had to empower both center and states to levy tax and collect it so we had we gave a different framework to this and we amended the constitution to bring certain changes in the constitution which can enable us to which can which could enable the government to implement gst okay so uh, the, so these separate powers which were earlier there for center and state now they had been integrated and both center and state had the power to levy tax on gst but that too with special uh, clauses or special riders that we'll see in uh, article 246a but first of all let us see it generally so why constitution 101st amendment act was required why it was required because there were concurrent powers on uh, so this was there so why because separate powers were there for uh, center and state for levying the taxes but we needed the concurrent powers we needed the integrated powers for to be given to both of them to both center and state to levy and collect taxes for this we needed need a special or separate framework for levying the taxes under constitution that is why this amendment was brought now after seeing the uh, clauses of amendment in this act you will appreciate that why this amendment was required because we could have put it under concurrent list also there could have been one argument or one thought that why to have a separate amendment act because we said one list was for center one list was for state and third list was to for both center and state so either state or center could make the laws but we did not we did not want that either state or center could make the laws or as per their wish we want a separate framework because so many things were to be stipulated we said that igst had to be collected by center then states we saw the gst framework just now no legislative framework so it is very complex and very comprehensive that has to be laid down by the constitution 101st amendment act and that is why it was required so concurrent powers on now what this um, i the uh, 101st amendment act actually laid down was uh, the simultaneous powers were given to both center and state to levy tax on goods and services then igst igst was to be levied by center and it the it was to be collected by center also so that is why i said that we could not have just put it in the concurrent list putting it in concurrent list would not have actually uh, laid down this type of framework so this constitutional amendment act put, uh, laid down or it uh, put forth that the igst had to be levied for the um, ha- had to be levied and collected by the central government then for determining the place of supply that what how, which are the principles which will determine the place of supply and when we can say that this particular supply is an interstate supply that shall also be formulated by the government gst will be levied on all supply of on supply of all goods and services except alcoholic liquor for human consumption this we will see from the definition also afterwards but we have already i have already told you that alcoholic liquor for human consumption 
is not subject to GST. It is outside the purview of GST. So GST can never be levied on alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Then uh, a separate article was introduced which empowered president to constitute GST council. GST council was very important. It is such an important authority for recommending all the GST legislations, rules, then procedures, notifications. Everything comes from GST council only. It recommends all the uh, legislations, all the acts regarding GST. So that um, GST council was constituted by the Constitutional Amendment Act. It empowered president to constitute the GST council and it was formed. Now the concept of declared goods which was there under central sales texts. Those of you who are not aware, let it be, doesn't matter because we cannot go into CST um, details but we, have, we used to have special provisions for the list of items which were which were termed as declared goods of special importance. So that has also been done away with because CST has primarily been done away with. Then this point that the petroleum and petroleum products will not have GST presently. They will be, it will be levied on these products on a particular date that has also been provided in this amendment act. Tobacco, the center retained the power to levy the excise duty. Because, however, with regard to the interstate supply of goods, the center has the exclusive power. This is also provided under this article only, Article 246A. When I was telling you about the Constitution 101st Amendment Act 2016 clauses, it somewhere or the other has amended some existing article or it has introduced some new article in the Constitution to carry out that amendment. So one such amendment is Article 246A. It is a new article which has been introduced for levying GST or for granting power to levy, make laws with respect to GST. So first of all, it says for any law, for making any law relating to GST, both center and state have been granted the power. But with regard to interstate supply of goods or services, center has the exclusive power. And this is the article which provides that the presently or uh, the GST on petroleum products will be levied from a date to be notified. It will not be levied presently. Okay, I hope this is clear to you all. Uh, I hope there is no network issue coming up for other students because someone is pointing out a network issue. So if it's there, please let me know. So see, this is the definition of goods and services tax. I had already uh, referred to this during the session that the definition of goods and services tax, which has been newly inserted uh, under the Constitution Amendment Act, it was inserted that by Article 366, Clause 12a. It says goods and services tax means tax on any tax on supply of goods or services or both, except taxes on the supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption. So, uh, and this article, this article 279A we'll do in next class. But before that, I will take some queries. If alcoholic liquor is for non-human consumption, if alcoholic liquor is for non-human consumption, that means it, it may be for medicinal purposes, That ye then yes, it will be included in the GST purview. Some students are uh, asking for Hindi explanation, but um, I think I have tried to incorporate Hindi to the extent possible. So if it is still there, please uh, let me know that uh, network issue is still there. Yes, Article 246A kya batata hai ki aapki power jo center or state ko jo um, GST ke laws banane ke liye di gai hai, wo Article 246A mein hai. Constitutional Amendment Act ne kya kiya ki GST, uh, GST law ko banane ke liye power dene ke liye Constitution ko amend kiya gaya. और अमेंड करने के बाद जो क्लॉजेस हमने अभी पीछे देखे वो सारे क्लॉजेस उसमें बताए गए कि दोनों के पास कॉन्करेंट पावर्स हैं दोनों साइमल्टेनियसली सेंटर और स्टेट गुड्स और सर्विसेज पे टैक्स लगा सकते हैं लेकिन इंटरस्टेट सेल पे अगर टैक्स लगाना है तो वो पावर्स उसके लिए जो लॉ बनाना है उसकी पावर सिर्फ और सिर्फ पार्लियामेंट यानी सेंटर के पास है और कब कैसे आप प्लेस ऑफ सप्लाई डिटरमिन करोगे वो भी सेंटर ही डिटर्म उसके लिए भी लॉ सेंटर ही बनाएगा जीएसटी सब चीजों पर लगाया जा सकता है लेकिन एल्कोहलिक लिकर फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन पे नहीं लगाया जा सकता क्योंकि जीएसटी की जो डेफिनेशन है उसी से बाहर है एल्कोहलिक लिकर फॉर ह्यूमन कंजम्पन उसके बाद प्रेसिडेंट को पावर दी गई कि वो कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वो जीएसटी काउंसिल फॉर्मुलेट करे वो जीएसटी काउंसिल बना ले कॉन्स्टिट्यूट करे क्योंकि जीएसटी काउंसिल ही सारे लॉ सारी लेजिस्लेशन रूल्स प्रोसीजर्स सब इनैक्ट करने में हेल्प कर, बनाने में हेल्प करेगा रिकमेंड करेगा वही 
पेट्रोलियम और पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स पे अभी जीएसटी नहीं लगेगा वो जीएसटी के परव्यू में रहेगा लेकिन जीएसटी किसी नोटिफाइड डेट से लगेगा टबैको पे जीएसटी भी लग सकता है और जीएसटी तो लगेगा ही लगेगा लेकिन उसके साथ साथ एक्साइज ड्यूटी भी सेंट्रल एक्साइज ड्यूटी भी सेंटर लगा सकता है और कॉम्पनसेशन देना है जो स्टेट्स को क्योंकि स्टेट्स को लॉस हो रहा था जीएसटी को इम्प्लीमेंट करने से तो वो कॉम्पनसेशन देने के लिए भी सेपरेट uh, लॉ बनाया जाएगा आर्टिकल 246 भी यही बातें बता रहा है कि आपको सेंटर और स्टेट को पावर मिली कि वो जो है जीएसटी के लिए लॉ बना सकता है लेकिन इंटर स्टेट सेल के लिए सिर्फ सेंटर ही लॉ बनाएगा और वही पेट्रोलियम और पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्ट्स के ऊपर जीएसटी एक किसी नोटिफाइड डेट से लगेगा नाउ वील टेक सम क्वेरीज एक्चुअली आई हैड सम I prepared some questions also for testing your understanding, but हम ये questions next class में लेंगे. When we'll start the session, we'll take these questions first. तो आप इतना in the meantime you go through the provisions जो आपने आज पढ़ा है, जो भी discuss किया है, हमने वो सब पढ़ेगा. And then I will discuss with you the this these questions. I will ask these questions from you. Will GST be levied on real estate sector? GST real estate sector पे नहीं लगता. GST is not levable on real estate sector. It is outside the purview of real uh, the GST. So on any sale of any building. Completed building is there, then GST will not be levied on that. Interstate trans when interstate transaction is done, IGST will be applicable. Interstate yes, in on an in on any interstate transaction, IGST will be levable. On any intrastate transaction, which is taking place within a single state or a single union territory, then in that case, CGST plus SGST will be levied. If it is a state or state uh, union territory with legislature then cgst plus sgst will be levied if it is in a single union territory transaction is taking place in a single union territory then cgst plus utgst will be levied okay shruti is saying you are going bit fast actually time is running short shruti so cascading ko hindi mein explain karne ke liye somebody is requesting cascading ka matlab hai tax ke upar tax na lagana matlab tax ke upar tax lagna cascading hota hai but wo tax cascading na ho aisa gst mein कोशिश की गई है उसके लिए क्या है कि हर स्टेज पर अगर आपको आईटीसी का सेट ऑफ मिलता जाता है तो आपके टैक्स के ऊपर टैक्स नहीं लगता आप क्या करते हो सिर्फ जितनी वैल्यू ऐड की है उसी पे टैक्स लगा रहे हो तो उससे जो टैक्स कैस्केडिंग मतलब जो टैक्स के अमाउंट के ऊपर भी टैक्स लग सकता है वो पॉसिबिलिटी नहीं रहती है क्योंकि हम सिर्फ उतने ही अमाउंट पे टैक्स लगा रहे जो की हमने इस स्टेज में एड किया है यानी जितना हमारा प्राइस इस स्टेज में बढ़ा सपोज हमने जो खरीदा और जितने में हम बेच रहे हैं तो जितना डिफरेंस है हम सिर्फ उसी पे टैक्स लगा रहे हैं जो टैक्स हमने अपने परचेज पे पे किया होगा परचेज अमाउंट को परचेज अमाउंट को हम ले ही नहीं रहे उसके अंदर हम तो सिर्फ उतना अमाउंट ले रहे हैं जितना हमने एक्चुअली में ऐड किया अमाउंट सेल करते टाइम तो हम उस तरह से टैक्स कैस्केडिंग मतलब टैक्स के ऊपर टैक्स पे करने से बच सकते हैं जीएसटी के अंदर I will try to speak Hindi or English also slowly so that uh, you can understand them. Uh, Ma'am, is there any more changes in old scheme and new scheme syllabus? No, uh, Yashoda, I have already covered all the three changes: place of supply, TDS, TCS provisions, and accounts and records. These are the three topics which have been added. Aki kuch agar kuch detail me kuch aur hoga, chote chote topics bhi ho sakte hain that we will discuss during the course of the session itself. Okay, or. Uh... इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट नाजिला इज आस्किंग टू एक्सप्लेन अगेन इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट का कॉन्सेप्ट वही है जो अभी हमने किया कि द टैक्स व्हिच इज पेड एट द टाइम ऑफ परचेजिंग द गुड्स और एट द टाइम ऑन द इनवर्ड सप्लाईज इज यूज्ड फॉर पेइंग टैक्स ऑन द आउटवर्ड सप्लाईज सो दैट मैकेनिज्म इज कॉल्ड इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट मैकेनिज्म देयर इज अ सेपरेट डेडिकेटेड चैप्टर फॉर इनपुट टैक्स क्रेडिट वी विल डू दैट इन द सेपरेट चैप्टर व्हिच इज देयर because if i start discussing today input tax credit na it, this will take other students time but a general concept if we try to explain it in generally it is that whatever tax we are paying on inward supplies can be utilized for paying tax on the outward supplies we have so many other riders and conditions for doing this but that we will do when do when we uh, go through that chapter input tax credit okay some that is Hmm. I hope your answers have your questions have been answered now. Till how many pages we have to read? In fact, I will take that example also, which I told you that there are two examples in the your book. 
no uh, today we have tried to cover almost almost first 36 uh, pages we have covered all in fact you can say 38 pages we have covered of the study material gst and mca related ma'am gst and M gst is a tax actually and mc is an authority which is ministry of corporate affairs so this finance department comes under mc only in fact in our institute comes under mca and uh, how many pages i have already told you um, divya is saying you are very fast but i understand so divya i will try to be a bit slow next time and uh, okay ashok is also saying your speed will affect our understanding so i will try to be a bit slow because we have to cover a lot and i try to give you as much uh, concepts and as much uh, knowledge which i can give in within this limited time so but i will try to be more uh, you know slower next time why does tobacco have gst and non alcoholic liquor for human and not alcoholic liquor for human consumption is there any specific difference and reason it could be because of some arrangement between states that they didn't want to include alcoholic liquor for get alcoholic liquor for human consumption within state within the gst purview So uh, with this, we come to an end of this session. Uh, hope if in case you have any queries, you can uh, ask in the next session. We'll take your queries there. Okay. Thank you so much.